someone stole my credit card and bought an iPad, but had it shipped to my house. What's your best stupid criminal story? A friend of mine had his backpack with his $1,400 engineering laptop in it, stolen, while at the campus food court. I had a weird gut feeling it would turn up on Craigslist, or somewhere similar. Every day for a week I checked Craigslist. Exactly one week later, I found the laptop. This extremely stupid criminal took a picture of the laptop screen with my friend's login name. Yeah, very stupid criminal. So I contacted the seller immediately via email and he responded within 20 minutes. I said I'd like to buy the laptop from him. We agreed to meet at a nearby parking lot later that day. Next, we called the cops. They agreed to set up a sting on the thief. One of the officers pretended to be a buyer and approached the thief. The officer acted as if he was examining the laptop but was actually looking for the serial number. Boom, it had a matching serial number and they arrested this dumb sheet. A week ago, four months later, the guy was proven guilty and to my knowledge is spending a year in prison. Plus, my buddy finally got his laptop back. My grandfather is a war veteran, the gung-ho type that loves his automatic weapon collection. Not a redneck, he actually lived up in northern USA, he just was a high-ranking human weapon with a love of guns. Fast forward from 1950 to 1999, retired and nearly 80 years old my grandfather was out on his lawn power washing his boat when a thief came up behind him and ordered him into his house at gunpoint. While inside the house my grandfather instructed this single thief that all of his money was upstairs in a box in his coat room. Thinking my grandfather an old and weak person, the thief leaves him alone to go retrieve his loot upstairs. Grandfather goes to his gun case in the other room, retrieves an M401 assault rifle, he makes a quick stop at his liquor cabinet to pour himself a glass of scotch and is waiting silently in a rocking chair facing the stairs. There was no money in the coat room closet, the thief was angry now. Rushing down the stairs he nearly sheet himself when he sees an assault rifle pointed at him. He stumbles down the stairs and knocks himself out cold on the hardwood railing on the way down. Grandfather ties him up and calls police. TLDR, do at least a little research before you rob Grandbo edit. I know rednecks live all over the USA, not just the South. My grandpa was against the disrespectful way some southern gun owners treat gun ownership and their lack of respect for good scotch. I wanted to make sure he was not called a redneck for he wouldn't appreciate it. Edit. 2. About the scotch. I used to question it as well, but he once told me that I thought I was going to have to kill someone that day, I didn't want to kill or die without scotch nearby ever again. Edit hash 3. Here is the best picture I could find of the weapon I remember seeing in his collection. HTTP. Upload. Dot Wikimedia. Dot org. Slash. Edit hash 4. Thank you for all of your support of Grandbo. He would probably like for me to share with you one of his favorite things to say. If you can't solve a problem with a machine gun or your dick, try using both at the same time. I've got one from this past weekend actually. I volunteer cleaning up a local park. It's called a park, but it has no facilities, no employees, etc. It's really more of a forest and it doesn't get much official attention. Anyway, almost every day, I walk through, pick up trash, and ensure it's properly disposed of. It's a beautiful park and I like to keep it that way. So Sunday afternoon I found that someone had dumped a huge amount of construction debris in the park along one of the access roads. As I piled it up neatly, I found a receipt with a guy's name, address, and phone number, along with a description of his vehicle, including the make, model, mileage, and VIN. So I called the state park police and asked to speak with an officer, showed him the dump trash, showed him the receipt I found, and made a formal complaint. He gave me the usual we'll let you know if we need anything else from you. The officer called me last night to thank me for finding the receipt. He said they went and paid the guy a visit, found that vehicle in the driveway, and he answered the door. Are you John Doe? He said yes that's me. The officer said he insisted he knew nothing about illegal dumping, no surprise, and when it seemed like the interrogation was going nowhere, he pulled out the receipt, and then the guy said, that's not my name. 
He already said it was him. The officer told me that's when he said, Okay sir, if you're not going to properly identify yourself, you're under arrest for obstructing a government official, a class A misdemeanor, and we'll fingerprint you at the station and find out who you really are. Suddenly the guy's story changed, he was the guy on the receipt, that was his truck, and he dumped the trash in the park. The officer even said that the guy said, I never thought I'd get caught. And he wouldn't have either, if it wasn't for us meddling kids. TLDR guy dumps construction debris in park, leaves receipt with name, address, phone number, make slash model slash color slash mileage of vehicle and VIN. Guy lies about it when questioned by police, comes clean after confronted with receipt. When I worked at Guitar Center a couple came into the store. The guy left, and the girl stayed, checking out guitars. A sales guy saw her holding two higher-end Gibson Les Pauls down by the low-end side of the wall by the BC Riches. He asked if he could help, and she asked a question about the guitars. He took one from her, and went to check something on it. Once he was about 20 yards away, she bolted. She sprinted down the hallway to the warehouse, past the bathrooms, and busted out the emergency exit door that led out behind the store. Two guys took chase and made it out in time to see a car squealing around the corner of the building. We really had nothing to go on. I'm pissed because having a $3,500 guitar stolen cuts into my bonus and it just overall sucks to have your crew bummed about the theft etc. Cut to one week later. I'm running my morning meeting and I'm told I have an important phone call. I take the call and my friend is telling me I have to check my email. I do and there's a link from him to a Craigslist ad. The Matherfica posted a photo of himself holding the guitar. I know it's ours. I just know it. He describes it inaccurately and is asking $1000. Gives a BS reason for it not having a case. We need the serial number. We need that faking number. Another manager calls him pretending to be a collector. He casually asks for the serial number, saying he's only looking for guitars from certain years. He calls it a date code, but I don't think the guy is buying it. He tells him he'll call him back with the number but never does. We are antsy. We call the cops. We form a plan. Another of our guys calls and tells this dude he just has to have this guitar. He'll come meet him with cash. Guy agrees. They meet at a gas station. Dude walks up with this gorgeous $3,500 Le Paul in a $35 gig bag. The BS for a bit, and my dude asks to see the guitar. He looks it over, and checks the serial. It's ours. Yeah man, this is exactly what I was hoping for. Great guitar. Then he waves across the street. To the cop car, that was waiting around the corner. Dude is like a deer in headlights. Cops arrest him, and even let us leave with the guitar. Back at the store my friend's phone rings. It's the guy's number. He answers. Girl, were you meeting my boyfriend about a guitar? Friend, yeah. I sure did. Girl, oh, he's not back yet. Are you still with him? Friend, nope. I'm already home. Girl, oh, weird okay. Well, did you get the guitar? Friend, I sure did. I'm holding it right now. Thanks. Girl, oh great. Thanks. Have a good day. One hour later she called back. Didn't bother to answer. She left a very nasty voice email with a lot of swearing. Priceless I hear he threw her under the bus in court and they both were in hot sheet over the whole thing. Can't top the grand bow story, but I have a good example of thieves picking the wrong person, or persons in this case, to rob. I was working as a manager at an ice rink at the time. One night during an adult league game, I heard a ruckus coming from the other side of my office wall. These are not thin walls, so I went to investigate. When I walked through the door that separates the lobby from the rink, the first thing I notice is that neither team is on the ice. The score was 3-2-3 and the referees looked a little frightened. Since the game had recently started, this was very odd. At that moment, the door to locker room 1 flew open so hard that one of the hinges broke. Out of the door, flew the limp body of a 20-something year old man with baggy jeans and a long white and bloody shirt, followed closely by his flat-brimmed hat and his two equally humbled buddies. This is what went down. At around the beginning of the second period, both teams noticed a group of three thugs slip in the back door and start looting the wallet cell phones from the player's clothes. This was a common problem at the rink and player are advised not to bring in valuables. 
common a problem as it was, both teams were on high alert from being robbed in this way just a week prior. The captains had the game stopped and called a timeout. This is when things got ugly. Imagine the look on these crooks. Faces when an army of 18 heavily padded, enraged men with 5 foot long weapons came storming into the small room to find them with a pile of cell phones, wallets, and watches. The first guy had come to by the time the cops arrived. The other two weren't knocked out and actually attempted to run. A quick crack on the shin with a hockey stick was all that was needed to keep them from leaving the players all gathered around the thieves in an impenetrable circle until the cops came. I spoke to the player who admitted that he knocked the first guy out cold with a chop in the dome. He said that when his wallet was stolen the week before, it left with the only copy of his favorite picture of his daughter who died a year earlier. This guy was in his 30s, so the daughter couldn't have been very old. He had a feeling he would go to jail, but I decided not to pass this info to the cops once I saw the guy come to The cops asked the players if they wanted them to go to jail. One guy chimed in and said I think they've had enough. The rest of the players disagreed and said no they haven't. Fuck em. Off they went. TLDR. Don't steal from hockey players, especially not 18 of them. This story begins at around 3am outside my apartment complex. We lived in a corner suit ground floor apartment. I heard a rustling and looked out my window. Guy was dragging around a box of donated clothing in the parking lot, occasionally stopping to throw out some ladies clothing, which I assume it all was. Now, the next morning, girlfriend and I got up and went to work. I worked only a few blocks away so I walked. I passed the same guy sleeping on the corner of the street. I walked by not thinking anything about it. Around 10am I get a call from the landlord saying my apartment got broken into. After I passed this guy and got out of sight, he got up and knocked on the neighbor's windows. She looked out and he told her that he forgot his key and wanted to be let in. She said no, fuck off. Two minutes after that she heard the guy knocking on our window. Apparently since nobody answered he busted the glass and let himself in. I guess she didn't hear this. After tearing our place apart and stuffing our valuables in a laundry basket, he walked up and down the hallway screaming. He was confronted by somebody and said he was looking for his girlfriend's apartment. After this encounter, the guy called a cab. You heard me, a cab. Neighbor saw the cab pull up and the guy get in with a laundry basket of crap, so she wrote down the cab number and called the cops. Cops called the cabbie and asked if the guy looked like he had stolen a bunch of stuff. Cabbie said yes. Cops asked cabbie for where he was being dropped off and picked him up there. Best parts. He pleaded not guilty and made me go to court. He left his shoes behind and took mine. I have size 14 feet. He has size 7. The thing that was the nail in the coffin I'm told was that I mentioned to a cop after I collected everything was that I was still missing my bacon flavored toothpicks. The cops found them in his pants pocket. When taking my Sbox 360, rather than disconnect the network cable, he ripped it out, leaving the end in the 360. I don't know how hard he must have had to rip to rip a network cable in half. Girlfriend was missing some of her birth control pills. We never found them. Assume Deaton. After everything, we only lost one sword and one beer. This is my story of how Visa paid me for a diamond ring. One day I went to check my credit card bill and noticed that there were two really charges. One at some random jewelry store in Seattle and one at jcpenny.com. This was back in 2003, before they would call you instantly. I called them, and they said they would take care of it. The charges were removed immediately. I thought I was done with the whole thing. My wife's family lives out of the country and we go visit them every year for Christmas. Everyone just buys stuff and ships it to us in the months before, so we get random packages all the time. A day or two later my wife, then girlfriend, calls me at school and says umm, did you order a 3 diamond engagement ring? Now, she knows it not for her cause she hates diamonds. We quickly figure out that this must be the $2000 sign charge on my credit card bill. It seems I had the item shipped overnight, no idea why they sent it to my address, maybe they were hoping to pick it up in the mail. It's almost time to fly out of the country, so we stash it in my desk and figure we will deal with it when we get back. 
Three weeks later, when everything has settled down, I call JC Penny and explain the situation. I'm very clear, I have the ring, did not pay a dime for it, and would be happy to get it back to them if they send me a shipping box. They offer to send me a prepaid thing, so I can return it. A couple days later it arrives, but it is only a shipping label and I don't have the original box. I don't want to be responsible for the item getting damaged in shipping, so I call JC Penny and Slpain the whole thing again. They say I should just bring the label and ring to a local JC Penny and they will take care of it. So we hop in the car and go to the local store. Here is the flow of events. The service desk won't help us. Anything jewelry must be handled by that department. The jewelry debt locks up the order and finds that it is a special order and only the special order debt can do anything with it. There just happens to be a special order counter downstairs. So we end up at the special order counter and I explain the whole story to the guy behind the counter. He gets his manager and I explain it again. I'm very clear that this is not my ring and I have not paid for it. The guy at the register, with his manager standing behind him, tells me that the only way he can ship the ring back is as a return, and he has to put the full amount back on the original credit card. His books need to match and slash out, and so that is his only option. I ask if they are going to be mad that they paid me for the ring and he says, if they come after anyone it is going to be me. UMM. Okay then I say as I hand him my credit card and he puts $2000 sign on it. I figure in a week or two JC Penny will call and get their money back. The call does not come. Not in 3 week or 3 months. A year later the credit card company gets tired of me having such a large positive balance and mails me a check for $2000 sign. TLDR crop buys a ring with my card. JC Penny pays me to grand. I used to live in a student rent, me, a friend, and a third guy whom neither of us knew. My friend and I went to Newcastle for a weekend on a visit, and when we returned, both my Xbox 360 and his PlayStation 3 were missing. We quizzed Guy 3 about it, and he claimed that he'd gone out one night, and the door was open when he came back. He said he hadn't contacted us as his phone was broken. That turned out to be a total lie. Naturally, we contacted the police, and the officer who came round inspected the door, and mentioned that there was no sign of forced entry anywhere in the house. A couple of days later, he left his door open whilst he went out. Neither of us totally believing his story, we decided to poke our heads round the door, to see if there was anything untoward. And what do we find? Yep. Both consoles, plugged into his TV. We left the room and didn't mention it to him when he came back. Instead, my friend went outside and contacted the police to inform them that we'd found the perpetrator. About an hour later, he was being led out of the door. In handcuffs two hours later, his entire room was emptied out. We work damn fast when we want to and in a pile of black sacks in the hallway. His father came by the next day to collect the stuff and verbally abuse us for grassing and we never heard from him again. To this day, we still laugh about the sheer audacity of stealing from someone you live with and keeping the stolen items roughly 20 feet away. I'm a fraud prosecutor, so I'm really getting a kick out of these replies. I prosecuted a guy for eBay fraud. He had been selling car parts, spoilers, fenders, etc. And not delivering, which is fraudulent, because he didn't have the parts, and he'd spent the money. He entered a guilty plea where he would do some jail time, and then he would be on probation. His terms prohibited him from doing anything on eBay while on probation. I later found out that, while he was in jail, he'd bragged to some others about his exploits on eBay. They encouraged him to step it up beyond body work and go for whole cars, where there'd be even more money. So his first week on probation, he decides to answer a newspaper ad selling a car. He goes and takes lots of pictures, but does not buy the car. He then takes the pictures and lists the car he doesn't own on eBay. The auction eventually closes for substantially less than the price listed in the newspaper. Of course, that doesn't matter, right? He calls the newspaper guy and asks for a test drive, taking the car to the lot where the eBay buyer is waiting. The guy wants payment up front and will be gone before before the eBay buyer and newspaper seller figure out they've been had. Except that the car is a fairly uniquely modified Mercedes. It just happened to be owned by one of the top officials in the police department. 
Despite the fact that this all takes place in a large city, someone else in the department spotted the car while surfing eBay. He called the official, who was surprised to learn that the car he'd listed in the newspaper was for sale on eBay. The official had detectives bid on and win the auction in a hastily arranged undercover sting. So when our hero took his test drive and arrived at the lot where the eBay buyer was waiting with a check, he walked straight into a set of handcuffs. With all of his MLs in evidence and calls recorded, he pleaded guilty and went to prison. Who knows what he'll dream up there. I wrote a story about this two weeks ago. Http www.reddit.com slash r slash okay I've got a good one. TLDR Bike thief listed my bike on Craigslist, got arrested and I actually got my bike back by the end of the day, pictures of conversation. So, last August, I ride one of my road bikes to my friend's house, who is a cop of that town. He lives in a quiet suburban town outside of New Brunswick, New Jersey. Not inside for more than two minutes, I come out to a missing bike. For some reason, he left the sport bottle holder on the ground, I think it was loose, it was an old Panasonic model Sport 1000, and it wasn't particularly dear to me, the gears shifted abruptly slash unpredictably, the cables were fraying, and the rims were so rusted, that I had to put black tape on the inside a week earlier to prevent the tubes from popping. The weeks prior, I was replacing tubes left, and right and just bought new tires for it, my biggest investment in this beta. All told, I shrugged my shoulders and thought well, it's the thief's problem, now, and laughed it off. Later that night, I place a Google alert on for Panasonic Sport 1000, just to see what the going price was for it, I figured it might be worth $100 to some collector, and sure enough, a few days later, I get an email while at work, Google web alert for Panasonic Sport 1000 on Craigslist, North Jersey Craigslist, Saville. Just a few miles from where the bike was taken from. Holy shit. No picture. Minimal info. Text this number for info. So I do. Here is the entire conversation. Http. I. Dot imga, dot com. Slash. I figure I'm gonna head down with some friends. Pop this guy in the jaw. And ride off with my bike. I tell my friend and he says. So he's received stolen goods at a minimum. Got any hard evidence we can use to say it's yours? I shift gears and realize I'd rather see this cheathead arrested than do some brazen bullshit. I go digging and the best thing I've got so far is this picture of the wheel on the bike rack of my car which I took to get the exact tire size when going to buy tubes in Target. Looks like a serial number on the top there. Would definitely pass in my department as proof. Come on down and fill out a stolen property report. I do just that. I tell my boss that I'm gonna stick it to some bike thieving fackhead, and she happily dismisses me for the day. I saw on down to the police department and he's already got a template going. Just had to hammer out a bunch of unique details that I couldn't have possibly construed from the photos, such as, I possess the missing bottle holder the cables are frayed on the top tube of the frame broken right pedal reflector, only one side front wheel reflector remnant plastic serial number on the tire. Serial number of the bike, I found a service record from years before, but it was on a sticker, that was evidently ripped off, black tape lines the circumference of the rims, exactly 2 revolutions per wheel, bam, stolen property report in hand, he gives a phone call over to Saville police department telling them what's up, and to expect me, I head over there, talk to the dispatcher, and wait patiently, while a detective is freed up to help me out. He comes out, asks for a quick rundown. In hand, I have the conversation and pictures printed. My original intention was to show up and have the bike surrendered to me with no issue. The detective convinced me that he should be arrested, since he knows where my friend lives, or to the perp, presumably me, and letting him go, sends a message that there's no consequences to his actions. Wait by your car and we'll meet you out front. A few minutes later. Two Saville squad cars and four unmarked units pull up to where I'm at. Slow day, A. Eh? The detective hops out and tells me exactly what's going to happen. I'm going to drive over, call him, meet the perp outside, while unmarked units follow me. When I get a chance to look at the bike, pretend to inspect it by flipping it over on its handlebars slash seat, check the tires for the black tape, and if it's my bike, 
scratch the back of my head with my left hand. So I give perp a phone call, he comes riding down. It's some minority kid, 6 feet 2 inches, and couldn't weigh more than 140 pounds soaking wet with two hands full of rolled quarters. He starts talking in pseudo thug, he was trying too hard to act tough, and I flip the bike over to check it out. I give the sign and the two marked cruises and two officers on foot approach fast. They start talking to him asking where he got the bike and he doesn't even realize what's happening. He tells them I'm trying to sell my bike to this guy. I'm not doing anything ro. And then it dawns on him. Priceless look Cam Jensen had in my mind to repeat forever. And then my favorite line as he's being cuffed. I'm not telling you nothing. Nice. But we already know the story. And I was really hoping for a quiet ride. We all go back to the station. I give my statement. They take pics of the bike and copy my documents. And I head off. Victory and bike in hand. Turns out he's a month or so away from turning 17. So it's a juvenile thing. Fast forward a few months later, victims get a summation of the judge's rulings, and out of that family court I read the sweetest part of the victory, besides some community service, as punishment, the perpetrator will have to wait an extra year to get a driver's license. Possibly the worst thing you could do to a 17 year old. Good that's what you get for being a stupid bike thief. When I was 15, I came home from the bus, stop with a friend one day, to see our back gate open, and a bunch of silverware and platters piled up on the back porch next to two bikes. I looked and saw that the window on the door was broken, and realized we were being robbed. I asked my buddy to watch the back door, while I went into the garage, and grabbed my full-size aluminum baseball bat, and yelled into the house what the fuck do you think you're doing? Seconds later, a head peeked out of an upper floor window, saw the large person with a baseball bat looking menacing next to their loot and transportation, and jumped off the second floor balcony, and ran for it. His partner ran out of the front door. They did get away with some personal info they tried to use for identity theft, but everything else they planned to steal was still there. When the police came, about 4 hours later, because Detroit, and looked at the pile of goods, they said and they tried to steal your bikes too. Without blinking I responded yes officer, can't believe those bastards tried to take our mountain bikes. After they left, I spray painted them new colors, so they wouldn't be easily identifiable, and enjoyed the coolest bike I ever had, TLDR, disregard larcenists, acquire velocipedes. When I was 12 years old, my parents bought me a Super Nintendo for Christmas. We didn't have a lot of money when I was growing up, so it was a really big deal. As you can imagine, I was completely overjoyed. My SNES was my pride and joy, so much so that I wrote my initials on everything, so people would see it and say hey, that scrumpster's SNES, sweet. Fast forward to February the next year, two months later, shortly after my birthday. At the time I had exactly two games, Super Mario World and Zelda Link to the Past, which I got for my birthday. My parents had let me rent Final Fight from the local video store, and I could not have been happier. Things were perfect. Then one Saturday morning I woke up, ran down to the den to fire up the SNES. To my horror, the Nintendo was missing. Along with all the cables and all the games, even the rented copy of Final Fight. We lived in a pretty good neighborhood, so we didn't really lock our doors. My family suspected the 15 year old kid next door, since he had been known to get into trouble every now and then. But after some stealthy 13 year old detective work, asking him repeatedly if he took it, I determined he was not the culprit. My dad and I had to go back to the video store and pay the dollar sign 60 plus for the stolen game, and I was video game less for a while from that point on. It was a dark time in my juvenile life. So a few months later, my parents were going out of town, and I had to spend the weekend with my older brother at his apartment. I was very excited, my older brother was in his 20s and very cool. So when I get to his apartment with my, uh, dad, we walk in, and see him, and his friend on the sofa playing Final Fight. I rush over and say awesome. I didn't know you had Super Nintendo. Suddenly a very weird luck sweeps across his face, and he starts acting all nervous. Needless to say, about 23 seconds later I solve the mystery of the missing Super Nintendo, as I pick up one of the three games he had, Super Mario World, Link to the Past, and Final Fight. 
Everything had my initials on it. Except Final Fight of course. I have never seen my father so mad in my entire life. To this day. Stupid brother. TLDR. I mocked some obnoxious fake debt collectors who were so desperate that they eventually claimed to be from Al-Qaeda and got them to leave me alone. One day in November of 2010, I got a call from someone claiming to be from a law firm and he said there was a lawsuit filed against your, meaning my, name and social security number. He claimed this was because of an unpaid debt. At first, this caught me off guard and scared the crap out of me, but the debt he was talking about made no sense to me because I'd never even heard of the company that I supposedly owed. He claimed he would send me some legal documents, so I told him to go ahead and send them and that I would look into the matter on my own as well. I asked in which state this lawsuit was supposedly filed and he answered Florida and New York, so after the call I checked the online dockets for those states. That's when things started seeming fishy. There were some cases involving people with similar names to mine. I have a first name and a surname which are both extremely common, but one was a divorce case. I'm not married, and the other had something to do with a house in New York. I rent an apartment in a state, which is neither New York nor Florida, and have no real property anywhere whatsoever. Then my synapses started really firing, and I thought wait a minute. There was no subpoena, I was served no papers, this sounds like bullshit to me. So I started googling for the callback number the clown had provided, and all kinds of info from scam avoidance sites started popping up. I started seeing the same words and phrases the caller had used when speaking to me, and I realized somebody was trying to scam me. At first I shrugged it off and thought alright, I'll just ignore them. The annoyance was only just beginning, however. Every couple of weeks or so from that November on into the summer, I'd receive calls from various people with foreign accents, claiming to be from such agencies as the United Nations Legal Department I thought that was the most hilarious one, the Cyber Security Division not a division of any larger agency, various law firms, the American Law Division of the state of Florida, and a lot more I've probably forgotten. I tried telling them you guys are scammers and you need to fuck off now. No luck. I tried cursing them out and basically not letting them get a word in edgewise. Again, no luck. I tried flat out ignoring them. Still, no luck. Then one day in the summer of 2011, I got an idea. I'd already started suspecting they were either from Pakistan or India. I know a Pakistani family, and the scammer's accent seemed similar to the very nice Pakistani family I knew, and I had continued during all this to find other posts on anti-scam forums about them, one saying that they definitely were from Pakistan, so I took a half-educated guess and went with that next time they called. One day they called, feeding me the usual script, this is so and so from American Law Division, lawsuit filed against your name and social security number, if I do not hear from you or your attorney, all I can do is wish you good luck as the situation unfolds on you, blah blah blah, and I just busted out laughing, and said you guys know I don't take you seriously. Right? That caught them a little by surprise. Look, dude, I said, you guys really need to go back to using United Nations legal department. That was your funniest joke yet. Now, I don't understand much or do, but I do sort of recognize it when I hear it, and I started hearing frantic or do conversation in the background, punctuated by English words like arsehole and mathurfica. So I said yep, I know you guys are in Pakistan. I recognize your language. You use Skype to make calls, I already did some research on the numbers that pop up on my caller ID, when you faking morons call me, and I know they are just dummy numbers for Skype calls, and you wouldn't need to do that, if you were legit. Suddenly they got quiet for a bit, and then things got really funny. Caller, hey, you know Osama Bin Laden? Me, uh, no, not personally, why? Caller, well, we are big time terrorists with Osama Bin Laden me, barely controlling my laughter, ooh, I see, ha ha ha, graduated to big time, did you, congratulations, guess the job at the United Nations, didn't work out for you, ha, huh? caller, hey, we are serious, I will come to your house and set you grandma and your daughter and your wife and your mama and your, me, feigning or, holy shit, you mean, let me get this straight, you guys are going to go to the graveyard and dig up my grandma, Ooh, boy, you're some horny bastards, aren't you? 
Can't find any girls there. More frantic conversation in the background. Me. Look, guys. It's been fun. But I'm really done playing now. I gotta go. Bye. Click they tried calling me again twice that evening. And I simply picked up the phone. Gave them a raspberry. And hung up. After that, during the next couple of weeks, I got maybe two more calls from them which I ignored, and then they finally went away. Haven't heard from them since. Edit. Formatting. When I was working as a waitress, I often used to go to great lengths to stop dine and dashes in progress, once jumping through the open pub window and chasing a trashy woman in Daisy Duke shorts. She was at least 50 years old. Several blocks, I was wearing a skirt and heeled sandals before catching her and getting my money. But this story isn't about that time. This one night a guy, mid-twenties, was sitting alone having dinner. He ordered a steak dinner, a couple of beers, and some top shelf shots of bourbon and whiskey. He ran up a $75 tab over his dinner. I come back from the other dining room to see he's not at his table. In fact, he's gone. I realized I had a dine and dash. Since it wasn't very busy I grabbed one of the line cooks. We jumped in my car and proceed to drive around the neighborhood looking for him. After 20 minutes with no luck I stopped the car and said to my co-worker we are going about this all wrong. You're a young guy, you like your alcohol, you just ran out on a bill after having a few drinks. Where do you go? The next pub. We drove up to the pub just down the street and walked in, and there he was, seated at the closest booth to the door. I slid in one side blocking him in, the cook slid in the other. I slapped his bill down and said you owe me some money. The look on his face was priceless. Turns out he had no money or credit cards on him. The second pub was pissed when I told them about what was going on and his lack of dollar sign dollar sign. But I did take a piece of ideas collateral. It was real. He was so embarrassed, he apologized and promised to come back the next day to settle his tab, which he actually did. And he left me a generous tip. I don't get people. Edit. Accidentally a letter. Just remembered another stupid criminal anecdote. To short for a story, Summer's Hole broke into my car by smashing the window and stole my CD collection, which was all opera. Expensive to replace, but I enjoyed the thought of some idiot delinquent checking their hole and going fack. And reposted from my blog back in 2005. This morning, I found out that thousands of dollars of charges had been made on two of my credit cards in the past two days. Now, the identity thieves are sitting in jail. This is how it happened. It involves identity theft, a careless thief, one pissed off of it and lots of luck. I mentioned earlier that it took me less than an hour to find them, but it really depends on when you start counting. Maybe two hours is more accurate. A. Who cares? They are caught. And where I have times listed, these other times pulled off of my cell phone. 8.02 AM. I get a call on my cell phone from a number one don't recognize, but I didn't get to the phone in time. Calling back gives me a recorded message informing me that the subscriber you have dialed is unavailable or has traveled outside their service area. That seemed odd because they had called me a few seconds ago. 10.00 AM. I receive a call on my home phone. I almost didn't answer it, but it turns out it was the Discover Card Fraud Unit informing me that $2,100 in charges had been made on my card in the past two days, and had I made them? Well, no. I typically don't go on spending sprees like that, but Discover was very helpful and honestly, I didn't even think about calling the police. I was actually just happy that Discover was treating me fairly, I gotta say, Discover's always been good to me, and I assumed that this was some online scam the police couldn't do anything about. 11.04am. My cell phone rings. It's that strange number again. Turns out that it's a visa fraud unit calling me, and thousands of dollars in charges had been made on my card in the past two days, and had I made them? Well, no. But this time I know I could be serious trouble. We start talking, and they told me that Costco Point Comp put through charges on my account despite the fact that the expiration date was wrong. Note that in my earlier ant, I was confused about the expiration dates. Now I know what's going on. They also mentioned something very interesting. It seems that just this morning, the thieves made a purchase at a Denny's restaurant at zip code 97232. Now I'm pissed. 
In fact, I'm so mad about this that the obvious doesn't sink in for a bit. I have interesting information. You don't have breakfast mail ordered. These thieves were at that restaurant and that's a local zip code. Since my net connection went down this morning, I called PDX42 and asked him if he could look up that Dennis for me. He did. I know exactly where that Dennis is and it's not far from where I live PDX42 told me to call the police right away and perhaps I should have, but I also know that speed is everything. Whoever served the food might be hopping off shift. If they are still at the restaurant, maybe they'll remember the order. It's a long shot, but it's the best I've got. 12 o'clock noon. I hop in the car and drive down to Dennis and ask to speak to the manager. I apologized for bothering him during the lunch rush and then explained what was going on. I pulled out my visa. This card was used here this morning. Someone has seen the thief. I know your register store the day's credit card transactions. Is there any way you can look up this number and tell me who served them? The manager, Pat, said he'd be happy to help. As I sat and waited, I called the police. They said they'd have someone call me. Great. In Portland, the police department is so strapped that, unless it's a person-to-person -person crime, it's pretty low priority. Pat came back and told me he found the order. It seems that it was a phone order for carry out, so he didn't have a signed receipt. However, he had something better. He gave me a description of the guy who picked up the order. He was a skinny blonde kid, early 20s, t-shirt, dark colored slacks and maybe 5 and half feet tall. Did he have any tattoos or other distinguishing marks? No. Were there logos or anything on his clothes? Don't remember. Did he say anything? Have an accent? Not much and no. Pretty normal. Great. This guy has described half of Portland's youth. Nothing. Is there anything else you can remember? Oh, yeah. He said he was staying at the Red Lion. I looked out the front window. There was a Red Lion in. Could my thief really be that stupid? I knew this was a dead end, but again, I had nothing else. I thank Pat, walk towards the red lion, and then remember I forgot a crucially important question. I ran back to the restaurant. He was here when we first opened 6am. Getting to the red lion front desk, I quickly explain what's going. They tried looking my name up to see if I was registered as a guest, but nothing came up. I described the guy but no one seemed to remember him. I asked if there was anyone there who might remember what their customers might look like that early in the morning. They called the lady who worked the morning shift and put me on the phone. I described the guy. No, she informs me. That describes tons of people who were there. She doesn't remember anyone who specifically might match that description. I thanked her and was about to hang up when she said sorry. We were pretty busy last night. No, he would have been here this morning 6am. Oh. I know who you're talking about. He has a roommate, and they're in room 327. How the hell this lady remembered the guy, and which room he's in, I'll never know, but I'm completely blown away at my stroke of luck. Do I have my thief? The people behind the desk start rooting around for information and we get the smoking gun. They have a registration through hotels.com for the guys in room 327. The room is in their name. The billing is in mine. 12 19 p.m. I call the police again. They want to know how I know the guilty part is in the room. I explain that I don't, but I have proof that he's registered as a guest. They tell me they'll send an officer. I go back to the front desk and I'm waiting, chatting with the folks there, and trying to get more information. It seems they frequently use the computer in the hotel lobby. One of them had a Minnesota birth certificate faxed to him there, and the hotel staff thought they were strange. They were also repeat customers, but it turns out they registered under different names, previously. Then the conversation fell silent. I knew something was up, and a young man walked past me to get to the computer. The manager on duty frantically pointed at him as he walked past, and I knew this was one of them. It was all I could do to stop myself from turning around and confronting the guy. Instead, I asked if they had any literature about convention rates. The manager whispered to me that, if I want to make a quiet call, I can use their office. I followed her, and walked past the guy sitting at the computer. His back was to me, so he didn't notice anything. 12.41pm. I call the police again. I ask when the officers would get there, and explain that at least one of the thieves is accounted for. 
At this point, the manager returns to the office and tells me the other one is in the lobby. One of the other front desk people takes my phone and gives a long description and pays nervously for quite a while. Meanwhile, the thieves leave the lobby and head back to their room. 12.50, I poke my head out in time to see police officers going up the stairs. The head maintenance man tells me that he's stationed people near the exits to see where the guys go if they flee. As it turns out, I found out later, as the officers were heading towards their room, one of them walked out and was trying to leave at just that moment. The officers stopped this person and entered the room. There was drug paraphernalia, needles, lying around and in searching the room, they found yet another piece of damning evidence. Credit card companies will sometimes send out checks that you can use to make a cash advance. One of them had one of my visa checks in his pocket. Signed. Shortly afterwards, the police led the two thieves by me. They were in handcuffs, and I had the biggest grin on my face. Dumb luck and persistence paid off. Not so much a thief story, but a criminal one nonetheless. I used to live in a bad neighborhood. Not the worst part of town, but definitely very close to it. As an example, after I moved out, an old man was jumped and beat to death while walking his dog through the park across the street from my old house. I used to walk to school every morning, and one morning I'm walking across a busy street when I notice an older kid walking much too closely behind me. I heard him say give me all your money. I say the first thing that comes to mind no, and swiftly receive a punch in the face. This is the first time I got a look at him his eyes were bloodshot, and I knew he must have been high and unpredictable. I never know what to do in heated situations like this, and I almost began crying. I held it together, remembered what a TV show once told me to do, and threw my empty wallet at him while keeping my distance. He skimmed through it, saw there was no money, and threw it down on the ground. All this took place right on the side of a busy street I couldn't believe nobody had stopped to help. Here's the clincher though this idiot began running towards the school like nothing happened. I'm collecting my thoughts when I realized that I needed to do something about this. I saw him enter the school, followed, still at a distance, found a teacher, and explained what happened. A chase through the school's hallways ended with this kid assaulting both the teacher and the school principal before exiting the building and being chased down the surrounding streets by police. When all was said and done, this kid was charged with battery, assault, robbery, possession of illegal drugs, resisting arrest, evading arrest, assaulting a police officer, for which all the penalties were increased drastically for taking place on school grounds. Oh yeah, this dump fact was also on probation. The police asked me if I'd like to press charges. My answer, really? abso faking lootly. TLDR, this guy was seriously faking stupid. One of the worst days of my life was when I was in high school and I got robbed of two items by two different people in two completely unrelated incidents in the same day. On this day, while I was at school, I lost my 1922 silver plated con coronet which was stolen from a band room locker. I came to school with my coronet and at the end of the day the instrument was gone from my locker. I had gotten a ride home from a friend of mine who was visiting from out of town and coincidentally was at the school visiting with old band teachers. Once I got home, I went downstairs to my computer room only to see that my computer was completely gone. At the time I was living with my family, so I figured maybe my brother had taken the computer or was playing some kind of trick on me. I asked my brother and he had no idea and thought I was hiding the computer from him. At this point we realized nobody knew what happened to my computer. After filing two separate police reports I had not heard anything from the police regarding either incident. Until weeks later I get an email sent to my email address from the criminal's father who lived in Saudi Arabia. The criminal was using my email address on my stolen computer. Immediately I knew who the criminal was, it was someone I knew through a friend at school. The ML had the criminal's name and enough information the police raided him two days later. The person that stole my computer was deported and had to pay restitution for the stolen item. I did not get my computer back, however I was able to buy a brand new 1 GHz computer with compensation and was one of the first kids in my town to have a computer that fast. Coincidentally I did see this person years later at a mutual friend's house and we all sat down and had dinner. All was forgiven. 
In the other incident, the police eventually found my horn by finding the sale on eBay. It turns out the friend that gave me a ride home was actually in town and visiting the school so that he could steal multiple instruments from the band room. I eventually got my horn back and my parents surprised me with it by giving it to me later that year on Christmas. The lesson I learned from all of this, that most thefts that occur are likely to be people that you know or have had run-ins with. TLDR, on the same day my trumpet and computer were stolen in two different incidents. Dumb criminals caught. A fellow Eagle Scout from my troop stole my laptop in high school. I had all the information saved at home about it and gave it to the cops. They told me that I would probably never see it again. Fast forward two weeks and a friend of mine comes and tells me that the guy has my laptop and is two stores down from the card shop I hung out at. So I walk next door to the police station and tell them where my laptop is. Two cops and myself walk into the bike store. They ask the guy if that is my laptop, which he says no. It's mine. They whip out the info card, verify it's mine, take a photo and hand the laptop to me. I then watch his parent arrive at the station from the card shop, see him crying as he comes out, and laugh as I cross the street. I then hand the officer a Microsoft in Carter CD that says property of X high school and say, this was in the case, I think it is stolen too. To which they then frog march him back inside for e-booking. I remember that he told the judge that it just showed up in his locked car while he was at Walmart and that he knew it was mine. He said that he needed it for college. The judge asked him are you stupid or just a plain old idiot? Feels good. Feels right. I'm so late to this party, but here goes. In the early 80s my dad was in construction and owned a van to transport all his tools around. Security on cars in the 80s was basically the door lock and that was it. Not too hard to get into. My dad's van had been broken into several times. Tools and the stereo were taken. My dad then decided he had had enough. He installed a new stereo, only this one had a bunch of razor blades glued to it. So when the thief would try to steal it, he'd cut the fuck out of his hand while trying to pull it out. And he got a guard dog for the van. A huge German shepherd that he had trained to stay at the back of the windowless van. So we're out bowling one night, come out, and lo and behold, the window is busted. The van and the dog are covered in blood, the stereo is half pulled out, and there is human hair everywhere. Nothing was stolen, the dog didn't have a mark on her. The blood came from the thief. So there was some guy walking around, bleeding, bitten several times by a dog, cut with razors, missing half a head of hair, who had gotten away with nothing. My dad was thrilled. Afterward, we had Razzie for 10 years. If you drew an X on a rock and threw it into the lake, she's come back with it in a few minutes. She eventually learned how to get my dad a beer from the fridge. Slept in my bed every night. Best dog ever. When I still lived at home, we went on a standard family holiday, only to return to find the house had been broken into and various items pilfered. They didn't get away with much as it seems they were disturbed and left stuff they were robbing in random places, TV on the kitchen table, guitar on the stairs. They did however manage to swipe the TV remote, which in my view is an unspeakable and inhuman act of gigantic proportions. Needless to say the federals were called and arrived post haste. They immediately spotted what we had not. That these puss filled little warts on the anus of humanity had left the tools they used to jimmy the door. Two screwdrivers, stuck in a plant pot next to the door. Questions were asked, notes were taken and evidence collected. Top Federal assured us though, that they probably wouldn't pull any prints from the drivers as criminals are stupid, but not that stupid. After about a week of trying and failing to fashion my own channel changing combobulator, long pointy stick, we got a call. Lo and behold they had pulled prints from said drivers and the little cork mushrooms had been apprehended, and our things were to be returned to us. Alas we were also informed the thieves remembered taking the remote, but mashed it up, because it was worthless. Bastards. TLDR house broken into, TV remote nicked but not TV, fingerprints found, thieves caught, stuff returned except for remote. Bastards. When I was 16, I was walking from my house to my aunt's. It was the weekend, 11 at night in August. I cut through a short street named Diagonal because, well it's diagonal. 
there's an electrician contracting company right smack in the middle of this little side street, and truckers can park their semi there overnight. I've never had problems with them, they're usually asleep in their truck by the time I wander by, and my city is fairly quiet anyhow. I'm strolling by, and the door to the lone semi, parked on the street pops open. Some guy, mid-fifties, stubbly grey beard, missing teeth and skeleton-like in build, hangs out of the door, looks at me, and says, Jit in here 16-year-old girl self is like, are you serious? So, I go no, and continue walking, whilst bring out my crappy emergency track phone, and dialing 911, with my finger on the dial button. He starts following me down the street. I come to my aunt's front yard, and dial the cops. I tell this hoboish stranger that I call the cops, and he scuttles back to his truck. A cop shows up, and I tell him what happened. He says, 16 years old is the legal age of consent in Washington. And I'm like I was not consenting. I was walking down the street minding my own business. This cop is obviously a moron, so I ask him to radio my uncle, who is on duty that night, and this is within his jurisdiction. My uncle comes, I tell him what happened, and he goes down the street to the truck, and knocks on the door. The hobo slash trucker answers the faking door with a needle in his arm. They search his truck, find all sorts of drug related items, some he planned to sell, some he was using for himself, mainly heroin and meth, and some highly illegal child slash animal pornography tapes in the cab. TLDR trucker tries to pick up 16 year old me, I refuse, call the cops. He gets busted with meth and all sorts of other illegal items. I had a backpack stolen from the backseat of my car. My window was made out of sarin wrap, so it wasn't exactly hard to get into the vehicle. The next day at the university that I attend there was this rubby dude walking around with my backpack that had my name on it in sharpie. Mom rules. I asked him where he bought his bag, and he had the nerve to give me some story how his sister gave it to him for his birthday. In the middle of class I was asked to give my oral presentation on the ad poster we had made out, but my flash cards were in the front of my stolen backpack. I stood at the front of the class knowing my cards were in the bag, and then I spoke out loud that my car was broken to and my homework was stolen. My teacher then proceeded to say that he would give me another week for the assignment. So I spoke up and said if I wasn't going to get in trouble could I just grab them from someone else who has them. My teacher looked at me like I was crazy or cheating so I walked to Donna's desk and grabbed his backpack and there were my flashcards. I then called the police and reported it. Thought it was funny because it was a custom made backpack my mom made me. There was no way someone else bought the bag. Stupid people. He was charged with a break in and also had to replace my window even though he didn't break it. Double bonus. Oh and I got 90% on my oral report. I'll make this as short as possible, but it's really a very long funny story. Guy stole my bike. I found bike on Craigslist, listed under fake name slash ml address. Was able to determine real name of perp, compiled packet of data on him, and friend slash family. Set up time to buy bike from him near busy area. Let guy give me his spiel about bike, while I looked it over to confirm it was my bike. Called BS and pointed out that I could prove it was my bike. Before I could say much more, he sprinted across a very busy street on a Friday right around 5pm. Got a lot of funny looks from people as one second we are talking about a bike and the next second I'm standing there holding a bike and this guy is just like gone. My intent was to hand him the packet I compiled, give him a lecture about how he was lucky I was a nice guy, and leave with my bike. Got ML 30 minutes later from him apologizing for taking bike, etc. 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 Emailed him at 1am stating I wouldn't call cops, etc. Got ML back in like 5 minutes from him stating thank god, and he was waiting for cops to show up at any moment, etc. In hindsight, pretty funny yo, and if you're a redditor, bike borrow a guy, I need a film related favor. Let me know if you're game. I'm on my phone, so I will do a TL doctor version for now, until I can get to a computer. TLDR, my house gets robbed while we are away. Dad does secret spy work to find out who did it. Recovers screenshots off stolen computers of culprit jerking off to other people jerking off on chat roulette. Edit, time for the full story. 
so my whole family used to go to a camp in Maine every summer. My mom was the nurse and my dad did various things around camp. My two brothers and I went with them, and we stayed there for 8 weeks. Towards the end of the year, my dad gets an email saying that someone was using my older brother's computer to go on inappropriate websites. My dad used to be very protective. At first he was pissed to my brother, but then he realized that he was across the dining hall from my brother and his computer was at our house in Massachusetts. My dad immediately knows something is up, and as he gets more emails, which show him the activity on the computer, he sees the robber type their own name on a website. My dad then calls the cops, and tells them that we have been robbed, and know exactly who did it. My parents book it home immediately, to see that the robbers have gone through every single place in our house, from my mother's clothing drawers to my 10 year old brother's desk. They took everything of value. When the cops went to the robber we knew of's house, he was having a sleepover with another person who admitted to being in our house. We started to figure out that four high schoolers were involved in total, who all knew my brother and claimed to be his friend. Since they knew we were away all summer, they came to our house twice in the middle of the night and stole us blind. But once my dad gets my brother's computer back, the others had passwords, so they were useless to the robbers. He starts doing stuff that I don't even know how to do. He starts printing out dozens of screenshots. They contain the Sysholes ML account, which contains dozens of nude pictures of underage girls, pictures of the pot he is growing, pictures of the ringleader getting off to the other men getting off on chat rowlet, aim convos with him bragging about robbing these dumb Jews, and trying to sell our stuff online. The cops also got video footage of two of them carrying our coins in our piggy bank, a few hundred dollars, to the local supermarket to cash in. Since they were minors, they basically got no penalties, but it was pretty funny that my dad's overprotectiveness led to their ultimate demise. Second TLDR culprits got fingered and then got caught using their fingers on their 11th finger while others were doing the same. I should be working but oh well. Let me start by saying my company uses a product to manage our laptop slash server slash etc. They'll check back into a central management console. From there we can pretty much do whatever we want to with them. So an employee laptop is stolen from her house. It checks in once with some Comcast public IP address, and then it goes offline. We pass that public IP on to the police, nothing comes of it. We don't see it check in for a month, so we write it off as gone, and delete the computer account from the console. A few weeks later we get an alert saying a new account has been created. We look into it, and it's the stolen laptop checking in. Our management console allows us to view what's being displayed on the screen. So we hop on there, and notice a few things that are open. Her resume with name, address, phone number visible. Craigslist with a listing for this very laptop. Her Facebook page. So we take screenshots, delete any information off the laptop that might be sensitive, and pass all that information on to the police. They set up a sting and a few days later have the laptop in their possession. After the trial is over a few months later we get the laptop back. TLDR if you steal a laptop wipe it before you connect it to the internet, otherwise we'll be watching. When I was in college my roommate sublet his room to this ugly stupid beach for one summer. I was the only other one staying in the house, so we agreed to split the cost of utilities. I put her in charge of paying the water bill terrible idea in hindsight, and I took care of the rest. One weekend, the girl I was dating came to visit. It was a good fun weekend. But the following week I got a call from my girlfriend saying that someone stole a check from her and paid the water company. So, I confront the beach, and she denies everything, gets upset at me for accusing her, and storms out. I didn't have any hard evidence against her, and she kind of made me feel bad for accusing her. I even wanted to believe her, because we had a good relationship up to that point and I didn't think anyone could possibly be that stupid. But the next day, when I was at work, she moved all her stuff out and got the hell out of Dodge. I was so faking pissed off when I got home. Mostly cuz I let that beach fool me. My girlfriend filed a police report, so I called them and gave them all the beach's info. It ended up working out, because my girlfriend got the money put back in her account the next day. I was afraid I would get in trouble with the water company for paying with a bad check, so I called and explained the situation. 
They said they wouldn't do anything until the bank contacted them for their losses. Apparently they never did cuz I never heard back from the water company. So I basically got free water for a couple months. The stupid cunt overpaid. So we had a credit on our account. And she got arrested a few months later. Boo I am. The people who live two houses from mine decided to break into my garage while I was out of town and steal everything they could, trashing anything uninteresting. They got my entire childhood video game collection, Northeasts, SNES, N64, ETC, Steel Master Sword Replica, European Bicycle, Barbecue, Stepladder, boxes of old clothes, and boxes of family photos. A couple days later, I noticed my neighbors having a barbecue, with my barbecue, and my stepladder on the porch. Turns out, the robbers sold the barbecue to their neighbors for $10. I also found a neighbor with a security camera in the alley, showing the burglars taking bags down the street, and another neighbor who actually witnessed it, and could ID the guys he noticed moving stuff out of my garage, which he thought was strange. It has been two months since, and after I have repeatedly hounded the city, filing formal complaints, and going to the media, the police are finally applying for a warrant on the guy. As it turns out, the city has laid off most of their detectives, and has officially stopped investigating property crimes due to being understaffed. Of course, they are still patrolling for speeding tickets, they are just not arresting criminals. All my stories get buried but this is a decent one. So I was a hiring manager at a movie theater and was going through a huge hiring slash interviewing process when I get this complete weirdo. He showed up with a flannel hat on and was clearly into the nerdy looks and the nerdy. He had terrible manners, but I went through with the interview. He talked a lot about how much he loved movies and him and his girlfriend are always at my theater watching them. After the interview I sent him on his way and went back to my office to discuss it. The first thing I did was look him up my Facebook to see if his story was legit about his parents owning a rather successful pharmacy in my city and sure enough it was, but when I showed his picture to another manager she was dumbfounded. Turns out about a month prior our huge wall long Avengers banner was stolen after a late showing. An employee saw the kid, but had a broken ankle so couldn't chase him. SE said he fit the description to a T. We talked it over with one of our officers, they're real officers who do security outside of work, and she followed up on it, and got his address from his app, and went to his place. He fessed up to it, and gave the banner back but, only since we threatened to press charges. From what I hear he wanted to know, if we were still hiring. My guess was he wanted to work there to steal more banners. TLDR. Kid applies at movie theater after stealing banner, is recognized and stalked down to his house doesn't get job. A few years ago, my boyfriend's car was stolen from a train station parking lot. Filed a report, but didn't really expect to get the car back in working condition, if at all. Fast forward about a week, and the car turns up undamaged about 10 kilometers away at a shopping center. It ended up closer to his house than where it was stolen from. The cops drive my boyfriend out there to check that it was the correct car. It was, and so he drove it straight over to my house. When I got in, I noticed one of those stupid Warnabe gangster Fubu jackets on the back seat. My boyfriend does not wear those. I grabbed the jacket and checked the pockets. Sure enough, the moron had left his learner's permit in the pocket. Duh. His face, his address, his age, everything. My boyfriend, for whatever reason, didn't want to bother with taking it to the cops, so he goes over to this kid's house. Kid was 17, and knocks on the door. Kid's mum answered, and my boyfriend proceeded to tell her what her son had done, and that he wanted an apology, or he'd take the id card to the police. Mum makes kid apologize. Boyfriend leaves satisfied. The end. When I was a kid we lived in a town that basically grew out of a military base. If I remember right, I wasn't even in high school yet, I remember hearing a lot that the town was more than 50% military personnel. One day I went to the pool with my dad and brother. When we got back there were police cars on our street almost in front of our house. We went inside to see what was going on and noticed out the back window that a chunk of our chain link fence was bent down to the ground. My mom told us the story. A guy came sprinting and jumped over the fence, followed by a cop. That cop was followed by our neighbor four houses down the street, 
who was also a local cop, a bit large, and is the one who broke the fence jumping over. He, in turn, was followed by our neighbor three houses down who was an MP, military police. Then he was followed by our neighbor two houses down who was an army soldier. They chased him through our yard and tackled him in the next. The guy had robbed a pawn shop down the street, been spotted by a cop who started chasing him, then chose the most unlucky row of yards owned by three law enforcement personnel to escape through. The kicker? Had my dad been home it would have been full law enforcement personnel as my dad was an army criminal investigator. I was living in a big house in the ghetto side of town with my boyfriend. He was just recently laid off and we were desperately looking for a roommate. He left town for two weeks to participate in a medical study for rent money, leaving me home alone the two weeks. I was young, and it was my first time being alone for that long, and I was quite terrified. The two weeks pass and everything is fine, I'm with the kitties in a big empty house, but I was working every day and everything was normal. Two days before his study ends, I come home from work around 10pm and I walk into the dark living room and notice from the lights on the wireless router that it was hanging from the mantel where it sat along with our 42 inches plasma TV and PlayStation. I initially thought the dang kitties were getting too rowdy while I was gone. Turns out, a 42 inches plasma, PS, laptop, all Blu-rays and games, 36 inches LCD were all gone. All drawers. Cabinets were open and ransacked. Kitchen window screen was ripped out, I had the window open a crack, because our account was out, and I wanted the kitties to have ventilation. Back door unlocked, but closed, underwear drawer emptied, and possibly some catnip missing as well. The police, nor our detective really seemed to give a crap about anything. So once the boyfriend comes home, we head on down a couple blocks to our local CD trade post with the box for our PlayStation. Yep, matching serial numbers, just sold the day, before with movies and games, and not only was the guy caught on film, with six of his thug friends, but he also had to use his driver's license to get money from CDT. We call the police out there, and they make them give it all back, but they didn't go any further with any investigation on the guy. We also never got our Wally movie back, and assumed it may be directly correlated with the back child support on his record. But we knew who the guy was. Muahaha. Word on the street got out that we were looking for him. The guy has his cronies show up at my BS workplace to threaten him. Yeah, still cops don't care. The only thing they said was we can't find him and the guy. We'll just call him Dorian Ingram. Calls my boyfriend at work saying my driver's license was stolen. It wasn't me. Well, do baby his hypothetical street name. Ended up getting arrested later for some other stuff. So we didn't get our justice, but I'm still pissed that I had to get a new bank account due to one of my checkbooks being stolen, and I had a whole box of Triceratops checks go to waste. We also never got our TVs or computer, but insurance gave us enough to get a small TV and crappy computer to compensate. We slept on the pull-out couch in the living room with mag lights for the next few months. TLDR. Seven thugs cleaned out my house, didn't let my kitties escape, and used their DL to sell it. Head thug has pansy street name and possibly smoked catnip. I'm a little late to this post, but I have a story that relates, anyway. When I was 14, our house was broken into. In my room, I had a Nintendo 64, a PlayStation, two portable CD players, one purchased a month prior. The other a couple years old, with scuffs and marks all over it, a TV, and a box of candy. Also, I had just gotten my first guitar, so I was a little weird. I would keep it under my blanket. Not like I was tucking it in, but because we lived in a bad area, and the house had been broken into before, so I put it there to hide it, in case anyone broke in again. Well, I came home from school one day, and my dad told me someone had broken in. I ran straight to my room and pulled the blanket off the bed. The guitar was gone. I started crying badly. My dad knew it hurt because I had been asking for one for two years and just that past Christmas, he gave me his credit card and said, go to musiciansfriend.com. Your limit is $500. Be smart about it and if you quit in three months, I'm going to kick your ass. He ran in and hugged me and we had a moment. He was crying too. He said don't worry, son. We'll get you a new one. 
I don't know how, because mun is tight, but I promise I'll find a way, okay, okay. I nodded, and he left the room. I started looking around, to see what else was taken. The PlayStation, still there. N64, there. Box of candy, gone. New CD player, still there. Old CD player, gone. TV, still there. So, they left all of my electronics, except for the old CD player I didn't use anymore. But they took my only guitar. This is still terrible. If they had taken everything but my guitar, I would have felt better than I felt in that moment. I run to my door, which is still open, and slam it in a fit of anger. My guitar is leaning against the wall, behind the door. TLDR. Burglars broke into the house. Could have taken a guitar, PlayStation, N64, brand new Sony CD player, an old Storabrand CD player, and a TV. Ended up taking just the old Storabrand CD player, a box of candy, and moved my guitar from my bed to the corner of my room. I could see the burglar coming into my room. Why does he have two CD players? I'll throw this old one away for him. And why is this guitar under his blanket? That's weird. I'm gonna put it against a wall, since he doesn't have a guitar stand, like every other guitar owner in America. I guess that's about it. Better head home, the wife's cooking spag butterfina. Not a story related to stealing. But one time I found a wallet. No I don't mean I broke window, picked a lock, or used black sorcery. Found it in a bathroom stall, but say stall that's fine. Poor guy had his social security number, credit card number, driver license, etc. I was in high school, and knew most likely no one would know how to steal his identity or no people willing to purchase his information. I seriously contemplated stealing this guy's identity. It took me two days to make the obvious decision it's not worth it. I was young though and reckless. Took less than 10 bucks from the guy and a chip little gift card. He was a person I knew, but never talked to I thought of ways to give it back. I considered going to his address, but then realized he would think I intentionally stole his wallet with malice. This made sense, since I'm very Hispanic looking. I considered sending his wallet back, but then realized he would be more likely to call police this way. I considered placing the wallet back in stall, but then realized anyone could take it. I finally decided I would turn it into the main office stating someone left their wallet in bathroom. It was very sensitive material I would appreciate if you could get someone to send it back to him. I'm glad I decided to not do anything as I probably would have messed up and ruined my life. I would have a criminal record and almost impossible task of entering college. I never talked to the man whose wallet I stole before incident. Never talked to man after I returned wallet. TLDR. Stole man's wallet with credit card and SSN. Considered stealing his identity. Glad I didn't, after seeing all these stories. Returned man's wallet without ever saying word. I have two stories and a comment. I met a girl from Europe in LA. She talked me into traveling and going to Europe. For several months I save, and we talk over the phone using a phone card. Costco had a phone card that was $20 and 500 minutes and you can recharge it. While calling Europe every day I had the phone card number memorized, pin memorized, and her number memorized. Three weeks before my flight I'm robbed at gunpoint and they take my wallet with phone card. Few days later notice my balance going from 415 minutes to 235 minutes. I told the police they subpoena the phone card and busted the guys. They called Mexico several times. One of them was on his second strike and is still in jail. This was 8 years ago. My uncle is very well off and makes good money and is good looking. His sports car was stolen and he left his cell phone in it. The thug that stole the car saw photos of his girlfriend and decided to talk some game to her. This girl was an ex-model and very hot 10. She knows about the entire car situation and decides to play along. She says he is cute and she wants to meet for coffee and maybe back to her place after. I'm sure at this point he thinks he just won the lottery. No surprise she calls the cops, they meet for 3 minutes, and then off to jail he goes. He even showed up in a different stolen car. This guy was a 5 feet 2 disgusting Hispanic that was here illegally, and was only educated to the 6th grade level. Notice you guys say cops don't do anything with credit card and ID theft, and are no help. It is true. It is hard to bust these people and a waste of time. 
If any of you guys decide to go to the dark side, you can buy credit card reader slash writer machines on Amazon totally legal, and even buy card engravers. If you know what you are doing, and organized, clean your tracks and always stay on the move, and know how the system works, you can live pretty fat indefinitely without any problem. Only way to get caught is if you slip up, or blab your mouth to someone that rats on you. The problem is, that the consumer and retailers are paying the price. The credit card companies fight back, by making the consumer pay with high interest. I got involved on a dating site scam last year, where this girl from Texas messaged me in LA saying she is a head nurse of a hospital, and is transferring to LA and wants, to get to know me. We talk. She doesn't seem to care, that she makes about 5 times as much money as me. As we talk she sends me risky pictures, tells me she wants to have my children, and will take care of me. At this point I thought I won the lottery. For some reason she never wanted to talk on the phone, said the speaker part was broken, and was in the process of getting a new phone. About a month later, told me she was in a jam, and if I can open a bank account for her, knew it was a scam. I play along. The scam is I open the account, she deposits a fake check or money order in shops like it's the end of the world online. I can actually go to jail, because it is illegal to open a bank account for someone else. I call Chase tell them what's going on, and ask if I should open the account and they can get on camera of the person doing the deposit. Chase won't take reports, fraud claims, or tips unless you are a customer. Dead end. I call the FBI fraud line, and tell them what's going on point they respond, and I quote, this stuff happens too often. To chase every one of them, just don't send the money, and be more careful, and have a wonderful day. So again if you decide to get involved in online scams, Nigerian prince scams, blue collar credit card fraud, not the fraud where you find the card on the ground, and get gas at the station on the corner. I mean you do it, write and get disposable credit cards, and for the information onto it using a credit card reader slash writer, then spend it out of state. Get credit card info from that state then spend it in the next state, so forth and so on. You can live pretty fat without anyone chasing you for pretty long time on innocent Americans carelessness, greed, and stupidity. I lost my wallet a couple summers ago at a bonfire. I noticed the next day, when we were trying to order a pizza. I called up the girl who threw the party, and she said they were cleaning up, and would look for it. That next night slash morning, I woke up, not being able to sleep. I went online to check my bank statement. I saw that in the last day, $780 was spent. One of them being $300 on a couple rooms at a payment inn. I took my statement out to the state police. They drove over there, and broke up their hotel party. They were on the second floor, and after an hour standoff of pretending, to not be in the room, gave up. They had knocked out the bottom corner of the guard screen, and threw my license, and card out the window, almost hitting someone walking by in the head. It turned out the girl's boyfriend, who my girlfriend knew, and his friend, who was just out of jail, found my wallet, and went on a shopping spree. In addition to the $300 in rooms they bought, they spent about $100 on gas, $300 on boots, ordered pizza and a few other things. The girl, who is really dumb, claimed they were left hung out, to dry by her boyfriend's friend, saying that he left before the cops showed up. The trooper told me, that it wasn't true and everyone was there, and they admitted to using it. Needless to say, we don't talk to them anymore. Moral of the story, don't buy a hotel room with the card you stole. TLDR thief found my wallet, and then had a party in a hotel room they attended. Stupid criminal story, I have one, that I have told many times, but this is the first exposure on the internets. Many years ago, I lived in a small west coast town, that just happened to be the layover slash turnaround point for soft drink distributors. It was about 70 miles from the small city, where they were located, so the drivers would spend the night there in one particular motel. All units at this motel, were single cabins on a circular drive, hidden from the main street, and with a wooden fence enclosing the back. There were two mayor do well teenagers, maybe 15 years old at the time, who liked to remove a case or two of drinks in the dead of night from one of the three delivery trucks that made the run. Different companies, so coke. Pepsi, and whatever the third was, they made the run once per week. 
These boys also happened to have a friend, older, who had his own apartment above a storefront grocery, this comes into play in a bit, just setting the stage now. This apartment was across the street from an empty lot, and said empty lot abutted the wooden fence around the motel. So, one dark and stormy night, just kidding, no storms involved, these boys decided to ignore their self-imposed restrictions on the amount they appropriated, and went whole hog. Swing aside the loose boards in the fence, they proceeded to remove from the delivery truck, a case at a time, all of the drinks on the side of the truck facing the fence. Remember, this was many years ago, so all of these drinks were in glass bottles, and these bottles were all in wooden crates. The crates were heavy, restricting how many they could move at a time. The bottle were fairly loose in their individual slots, and if not moved carefully would make quite a racket as they clinked together, further slowing the process. Anyway, they took each case, moved it through the fence, and stacked it about 75 yards away in the empty lot. Rinse and repeat, until one side of the delivery truck had been emptied. They finished with a stack about 4 feet wide, 4 feet tall, and about 10 to 12 feet long. Then they had an epiphany. Neither had a car, nor, legally, could drive had they won. The eastern sky had begun to lighten. Oh, what to do? Cue the older friend. They went across the street, and pounded on his door, explained their problem, and asked for help. The friend, enduring his own legal problems, declined. As they sit at the friend's kitchen table, looking out the window at this huge stack of drinks in the parking lot across the street, and trying to figure out a solution, the sun begins to rise. The next car, that came down the street, daylight now, just so happened to be a sheriff's deputy. Car cruised by the empty lot, came to an abrupt stop, reversed and backed up, sat in the street for a long time. Then pulled into the lot beside the stack. About an hour later, apparently after some radio traffic, the soft drink truck pulled into the lot, and the driver proceeded to reload his truck. It took him almost two hours. The three of us boys continued to watch from a darkened apartment with curtains mostly drawn for the balance of the day, before deciding it was safe to emerge. The incident was the talk of the town for a couple of months, but the culprits were not apprehended. TLDR lack of planning prevents successful crime. Had a Halloween party at my house one year. My room had hoped up with a random girl. Turns out this girl was there with her boyfriend, and he found out. A scuffle ensued, but was quickly broken up, and the random guy and girl left. The next day, we are at home, and we hear a crazy noise. Someone bashing our mailbox with a bat. Then rocks start coming through the windows. As quick as it all started, they peeled off in a pickup. It was too dark to make out specifics. We called the police to make a report. When the cops pull in front of the house and get out, the officer on the passenger side steps on a piece of paper. He picks it up and reads it and asks a Udall do McFag stick? I say no. Turns out they somehow dropped their emissions test required to renew your tag in Metro Atlanta, which includes your VIN number. Took the cops about 30 seconds after running the van to figure out who it was. The truck owner and his two buddies were promptly arrested, did a short amount of time in jail, and had to pay us for repairs. TLDR. Guy vandalizes my house and drops a paper with his VIN number on it. My best friend's girlfriend was a thief. Well according to my buddy she had a problem, or whatever and he was so madly in love with her that he needed to help her. So yeah, you can see where this is going. Anyway she stole from me almost every time she and him would come for a visit. It got to the point where I made my friend pay me back for all the sheets she stole. Not counting money, she took my iPod, gold ring, three old credit cards, some CDs and much much more. I was sick of it, and the worst part was my friend kept putting up with her sheet. He had to pay me back three grand worth of compensation for everything she stole from me. I know she doesn't have a problem. She steals expensive things and not trivial stuff laying around. One day I notice my credit card missing and the first thing that hits my mind is my buddy's girlfriend. I was 100% positive it was her. I could have easily confronted her and my friend and got the credit card back, but I knew a better solution. I waited until she spent a couple thousand dollars on my card. Then I contacted her identify theft organization and had them find the person who took my card. Of course it didn't take long. 
She was arrested a few months ago and sentenced to 20 years in prison and 50 years of peril. Also one thing to note they found other credit and bank cards on her when they searched her apartment. So I assume this added to her sentence. I can't say I miss her. She was just a nuisance to everyone she met. I feel bad sometimes though. She was only 25, but life goes on and all that shit. When I met my former boyfriend, he told me he had a crazy ex. Had no idea just how crazy. She would call with secret caller idea, in the middle of the night, she would call and leave voicemails on his phone, calling me a beach and a hoe. After a while I called the cops and asked what we could do. They said my boyfriend would have to change his number. Since he had a company at the time, it would be really problematic if he had to change his number, so we decided to try and ignore her the best we could. After we broke up, I moved back to my parents. I was going through a really tough time because of a depression I'm still dealing with. One day I got a text from a number one didn't know. Hi sweetie. How's it going? I asked who it was, and she said her name was Louise, false, and that I knew her, but if I had forgotten, then it didn't matter. At the same time, she proved that she knew my full name and address. I got a really bad feeling about it, and called my ex who could tell me that it was indeed her. The following month, I got texts and calls each day, telling what a beach I was, that she would come to my home, that she knew who my new boyfriend was, and was texting him, she thought I left my ex for someone else. She harassed me to a point where I smashed my hand into a wall in pure age. Have a permanent sprain in my wrist now. This girl was 27 years old. I went to the police and showed them every text she had sent me, plus a list of all the calls she had made. They called her phone, left a message on her voicemail, and told me to change my number. Before I changed it, I got a text from her that said what the fuck are you doing calling the cops? It's not like they'll believe you anyway. My uncle is a cop and I've told him what a lying bitch you are. Good luck getting anyone to believe you. So I don't exactly believe in the goodness of the police force, even though I'm sure there are many nice cops out there, there is just something that isn't right. I certainly didn't receive much service. Sorry about the rant. After I changed my number and made sure you couldn't find it online, I haven't heard from her, which makes me very very happy. I know she still bugs my ex from time to time and that she started a lot of false rumors, so it would have been nice to have the police's support. I got two stories. Story 1. I had my car stolen a few years ago. The police found the car later that night. When I went to pick it up in the morning, the only things missing from my car was a $12 hat, a bandana, which I wore to work to keep sweat out of my eyes, faking gross, and my change. Still remaining in my car, a satellite radio, a GPS, and my iPod. Oh, and they left my Lil Wayne CD in my CD player. Best part, it was covered in fingerprints. Story 2, about a year after the car getting stolen, I got robbed at gunpoint two guys jumped out of a car and took my wallet and cell phone. They jumped back in the car and sped off. I tried to get the tag number and noticed it was a PA temp tag. Called police and gave them the information. Fast forward 20 minutes later, I'm on the phone with my credit card company to cancel them. Turns out, they're using them as I'm in the process of cancelling them. The nice lady on the phone tells me where they are using them. I'll let the officer at my house. No 3 minutes later, the officer says call your cell phone. I call my phone and the police pick up. The robbers were arrested with all my belongings still on their person. It turns out the temp tag that I described was used to cover up the actual NJ license plate. They failed to take the tag off after robbing me and police spotted a car with a temp tag pulling out of a parking lot. Upon stopping the vehicle, the guys matched the description, and they found all my sheet on them. Apparently when I called my phone, it began ringing in one of their pockets. I really hope this doesn't get buried as it is perfect for this post. Now, for a backstory my dad owns a music store. As in guitars, drums, bass, piano, etc. Basically like a small Sam Ash or guitar center. He actually does fairly well as he was head manager of Mars for 10 years and took his clientele with him when they closed. But anyways, on to the dumbest robbers I have ever seen in my life. My father has extra bolt locks on the front and back doors of the store, so it is very difficult to break through this way. 
So these genius robbers decided to get a ladder to the roof of the building and try to remove the appoint C unit to climb through there that didn't go down too well as events are about 1x1. So they decided to manually hammer through the ceiling where they busted a pipe and fell into the middle of the store in which the silent alarm goes off, which they try to disable by ripping it out of the wall. Fasipum. They then have about 5 minutes before the police arrive and they are making a smash and grab. They could have grabbed to tail a guitars a piece, and if you know anything about those they can reach up to dollar sign 3000 plus. They could have grabbed one head on a Marshall stack reaching $1000 a piece sheet. They could have grabbed some Alvarez guitars for somewhere around 4 to 500 dollars. But no. They grabbed two of our starter pack guitars for kids with a cost value of around $60 and two used bongos which my dad had on consignment. So, not even new. They then proceeded to run down the street with their loot in hand as the police arrived and tased them. So, between the two of them, they had the chance to snag around $10,000 worth of gear in seconds, but instead they stole a pose three quarter size starter guitar and a used pair of bongos, and then they got caught and are doing six years. Also, they were charged $15,000 in damages from the roof and trance, and the water damage which my father's insurance took care of anyways. Justice is served. My house was broken into. We thought it was multiple people judging by the amount of stuff stolen, but we caught him on our neighbor security video, but not his face, and it was just one guy who stole two TVs, boxes, laptops, games, a Movado watch, and all of the necessary power and av cords. Over 10 grand of stuff was stolen. He loaded it into a box and balanced it on his bike and walked it down the hill. Cops came two hours later and the detective could tell that the guy wore gloves and that no fingerprint kits were necessary simply by shining his flashlight on the windowsill. Pretty unheard of right? Turns out their shift was over in 30 minutes so they didn't want to be bothered that a couple of white college kids got their boxes stolen. Back to the stupid part, looking around, the guy was obviously dumb as sheet. He stole my 4 year old Toshiba 26 inch TV when my much lighter and much more expensive 1080p 26 inch computer monitor was sitting next to it. Also, because I'm a dumbass, I had 6 grand in cash from waiting tables stashed in my desk. He stole my iPod, which was sitting next to the box containing all the cash, and he didn't think to look inside. I had a program called Prey on my MacBook, I highly recommend you all get it, and sure enough, it fired up two days later. I was able to get webcam pics, screenshots, and an approximate location. Within 24 hours, the woman who had apparently bought my computer had applied for two credit cards, so I got a name, address, social security, dob, driver's license, everything. She bought it from the guy two doors down from her who when he opened the door to the cops, was wearing my roommate's watch. We got a lot of our stuff back, minus a TV and two MacBook Pros, which the detectives say he probably pawned that night. The worst part is I had all of that lady's info, and the cops were still unwilling to go to her building without an apartment number. Their exact words were we can't just go door to door asking if this woman lives there, that will give us away what? You are cops. Call the building manager. Christ I even gave them her SSN. Some dipsheets from my neighborhood broke into my car and stole my magic cards, some of which were cards I printed myself with my own face on them. Their mistake was trying to sell them to my friend that ran the card counter at the store I played at. He knew my stuff was stolen and saw the cards with my face on them. He called me up and told me when they would be bringing the whole collection in so he could buy it. My brother and I gathered several friends and they waited in the parking lot while I waited inside. The pricks showed up half an hour late, but they had all my stuff. While the three of them were occupied and distracted by my friend at the counter, the rest of the guys filtered into the store and surrounded them. At that point my friend says I would love to take this all off your hands guys, but it's all stolen. They protest, changing the story from the cards belonging to one of their brothers in the military to being one of their uncle's old stuff. Didn't matter, he pointed out that the cards all belonged to me, they were still unaware that they were surrounded. My friend tells them that they are going to pay for my window and compensate me for my time, or he was going to call his detective friend and have them all arrested. At this point the youngest of them whines, but I don't want to go to jail. 
they think they see a way out and suggest that, since it's my stuff, why don't we go outside and settle it amongst ourselves. My brother's friend pulls a hammer out of his belt and says you can stay here and deal with him, pointing at my friend, or we can all go outside and settle this. Since they were from my neighborhood, they actually knew who my brother's friend was and more importantly knew his reputation. They opted to stay and deal with my friend. In the end, I got the $50 I paid to fix my window and another $100 for my time. Since the would-be thieves were from my neighborhood, the guys we had gathered up knew them. They were told they were only allowed to leave their houses for the next two weeks to go to school. If they were found on the streets otherwise they were getting jumped. For the rest of the time I had that car, if they saw it, they would immediately turn around and go the other way. One time one of them was in the middle of crossing the street, when I got to the corn, he went back across the street and waited for the light to change again. About 10 years or so ago my mother's card was stolen by the lady five doors down. She made a lot of charges mostly very price perfume, women's clothing etc. She didn't bother to change the address and was just picking the packages up off of our porch before my sister and I got home from school. One day I came home early, sick. As I walked up to the house I saw her car and was wondering why she was here. Her and my mother hate each other. She comes trotting down the hill with a package. I said what the hell are you doing and snatched it from her while she was surprised to see me. It had my mother's name and our address on it. I yelled at her about stealing from us and she grabbed the box and shoved me down, bolted to her car and drove towards her house. I got up, ran inside and called the cops. Cops showed up and went to her house. She wasn't there they put out a call for her car to arrest her for questioning. About a 5 hours later they found her hiding out at a friend's house. She got arrested for assaulting a minor and stealing. This is when we found out she had been using my mother's car to order stuff. She still lives there now that she is out of jail and won't look at my mother when she walks by. Mom smiles and waves at her. TLDR lady down the road from us was using mom's card to get stinky water. Pushed me down a hill when I caught her and tried to hide in friend's house. Got caught and went to jail. I had been living in Ireland and was visiting home for a few weeks for Christmas. Home for me is right on the border between the west side of Chicago and Oak Park, a nearby suburb where burglary is quite common. One morning I woke up and heard some rummaging around downstairs, but didn't think much of it. As I'm going down the stairs putting on my pants there is a guy standing there holding a knife. I recognized right away that he picked the most serrated, least likely to injure anyone, knife in the house, but I decided not to fight back and ran back upstairs into my attack bedroom. The guy chases me and ties me up to my bed using straps from a pilot's reformer and belts. He then empties my suitcase which is about 4 by 3 feet and tries to fit a 40 inch TV inside. This isn't working, so he decides to put my laptop in its case and go. Only problem was he couldn't find the knife. He starts running around looking for it and accusing me of taking it and hiding it, even though I'm tied up to the bed. At this point I had a friend picking me up for work and the doorbell rings. The robber panics, runs upstairs, opens my dresser and finds $45. Can I have this? He asks. Well, I guess so. I respond. That's right I can Mathafaka rhyme running this sheet. He shouts. He then ran out the door, forgetting the laptop with only $45. A week later he was arrested for another robbery where he stayed in the house for 45 minutes after the alarm started going off. My parents have an extra fridge in their garage where they store extra beer, wine coolers, leftovers, etc. We were a family of six growing up, so we would have leftovers a lot. These days, it's mostly empty with some of my dad's beer in it. A few years ago, I was home from college one summer and my dad confronted me about stealing his beer. I was over 21 at the time and could legally drink and did so often with my parents. He wasn't terribly upset but asked that I buy my own instead of taking his. I had no idea what he was talking about. He insisted that the beer in the garage fridge had been disappearing quickly over the past week. One case was gone over two nights. So he bought another case, and it was empty after one night. I hadn't touched the beer. He drank Budweiser, yuck, 
So we got to thinking, my parents live in a relatively quiet nice neighborhood. Some older couples, some younger families, a private club pool at one end and woods all around. They left the garage door open often for our two pet dogs to come and go as they pleased, but always closed it at night. Perhaps there was a thief. My dad must had believed me because he bought a security camera for the garage. Sure enough, a week later he caught the kid. He called me downstairs one day and asked if I recognized this guy. It was a buy, maybe 14 or 15, sneaking into the garage, past the two cars, past the freaking dogs, so much for security, and taking beer out of the fridge and putting it into a backpack. He knew exactly where to go and what to take. Then he left. I was more enraged than scared. I had no clue who he was, I assumed he was some brat kid who would get dropped off at the pool and would then get bored and wander the neighborhood. We couldn't contact parents since we didn't know who he was and my dad wasn't really mad enough to call the police since he was only taking beer, so he set up a sign inside the fridge that read wave. You're on camera. He put a few con beers in the case so the kid would have to reach in and see the sign as opposed to quickly opening the door, seeing no beer and leaving. The kid came back about 10 days later, saw the sign and booked it out of there so fast. We didn't catch him in the act, he was good at timing his visits, normally around 6 or 7 at night when people were eating dinner inside. We watched the video that night and knew he had visited earlier. Long story short, the sign scared him enough he never came back. My dad has gotten smart and keeps the garage door closed more often now. The dogs still don't give a crap about who comes to visit. Back when I was a fairly new firefighter, 1993-ish, I used to keep my gear bag in the back of my pickup truck in the locked truck topper. Our department made us take our gear home with us back then in case of callback. We only had one set of turnout gear. I lived in an apartment at the time and used to keep my mountain bike in the apartment, but we had friends over one weekend, so I locked my bike in my topper to make more room in the apartment for the night. I woke up the next day to see my topper lid open and my truck tailgate down. I went down and sure enough, everything was missing. I reported it to the police and they started looking around town for a car that been acting suspicious the night before in my area. A bit later in the morning, the police found a car that matched the description and noticed some bicycles on the balcony of the apartment above the car and asked if I would come to that location to see if I could ID my bike. I went to the location and thought it was my bike but couldn't be 100% sure. The cop began to see if they could get an ID of the owner of the car from the license plate. While he did that I just wandered over to the apartment dumpster to see if anything was in there. I opened the lid and there was my gear bag with all my firefighter gear, bunker pants, coat, helmet, mask, etc. I turned around and showed the cop and said that I think this makes me 100% sure now. As I'm standing there I notice a whole lot of empty wallets in the dumpster as well. Then I notice a lot of full wallets in the bushes next to the dumpster, as well as car radios and all sorts of loose change, etc. The cop calls for backup and they get a warrant for the apartment. They go in and find a group of guys that had been stealing from cars all over town for the last month, including doing some breaking and entering an apartment. I lived in a college town. They had a ton of loot in their apartment, including a very valuable baseball card collection that had been stolen a week or so before my loss. I tried to look up the article in the local newspaper's archives, but strangely they only go back to 1997. Small town Kansas, ETC. When we were on holiday we had a friend visiting to take care of pets every day. So, we felt it was safe to leave the alarm off. Whoops. About halfway into our trip two men broke into our house and pretty much ransacked the place. They cut apart beanbag chairs and used them as sacks to carry their loot. They took a lot of valuable stuff and hopped over a hedge in our back garden and into a farmer's field to make their jet away. However, I guess they got a bit peckish with all that thieving, because they also took two bottles of wine, some beer, chocolate biscuits and two pizzas that they also cooked in our oven before leaving. Our next door neighbor's back garden must have looked like the perfect picnic spot, because as soon as they had hopped over our hedge they sat down in the middle of her lawn and began rifling through their loot whilst chowing down and getting drunk. 
Our neighbor soon spotted two strange men in the middle of her garden with sacks of valuables and called the police. They actually had a helicopter chase through the woods for an hour or so before they were caught. We live pretty deep in the country. Happy ending. We got everything back. We even found a pair of my mum's diamond earrings a couple of weeks later that they had dropped in the field out back. I had a broken 32 inches TV back in 2006 and went onto Craigslist looking to see if there was a place to recycle the TV. Amazingly, I found someone who was dismantling slash breaking down broken TVs and was coming through the area the next week. Thought it was pretty cool, so I contacted them and they agreed to come by early next week to pick up the broken TV. Said date comes, a guy around my age arrives, takes the TV, thanks me and leaves. I think nothing of it, aside from there goes that cheaty TV. Three weeks later I'm browsing around Craigslist when I see an interesting ad title saying 32 inch LCD TV $400, including the brand slash model in the title. Thought that was weird. I sent the guy an email inquiring about the TV, asking for a photo. The person who emailed me originally replies back using the same email he'd used when we first started talking. I was using a dummy email I normally use for spam and showed me a photo of the TV, adding that there was no damage and it was cosmetically perfect, except for a dent in the bezel. The dent in the bezel was from a hammer I had when I was smashing at the TV angrily. I had just gotten off the phone with the representative from the company. My TV had died from a firmware bug that caused the TV to irreversibly crash. If you unplugged a VGA cable while the TV was on and this bug was not under warranty and no, they would not service or replace my TV. I think it was Magnavoc. I knew that the TV was dead completely, and the guy was being pretty smart $400 in free delivery, so nobody could track him down, aside from having his email address. I promptly emailed him back saying that I was the guy that had given him the TV in the first place, I knew he was scamming people, and blah blah blah, saying that he should break the TV and show me photos for proof or else he'd be sorry. Useless move, but whatever. A few days later and no response. I tracked him down on Facebook, his email contained his full name, and was linked on his Facebook account, a few days later, and saw that he had his mom, dad, brother and her sister's friend and enlisted family. I used my dummy Facebook account to befriend him, was accepted within a day. I wrote a message letting them all know what he was doing, then posted the same thing on his wall. A few days later his Facebook disappeared from the interwebs. Alrighty, here's mine. It's long and a novel, so I'll put the TLDR up at the top. TLDR. Friend asks if I can sell him my Xbox, because his is broken, I don't sell it to him. Friend breaks in, and steals my Xbox, ends up being accused of breaking in by me. Friend denies it. Friend breaks in again leaving his broken Xbox in its place. I trace the serial number back to him, call the cops, then break up his relationship, while getting my Xbox back. I'm a dude, and used to have a rumor to was a girl. Before anyone starts to think otherwise, she wasn't my type so there was no interest of that kind. Anyways, she used to have a boyfriend that would come over to our apartment every now and then to visit her. Being the nice guy that I am, and not wanting to be the weird quiet absentee roommate, I befriend her boyfriend. He's not the sharpest guy, and we are not the closest of friends, but every once in a while he'd arrive at our apartment earlier than her, and we chat, and play video games on my couch. I even invite the guy over for my video game nights, where once every few months I invite a bunch of friends over because I happen to have 2xbox 360 system linked together, and 8 player Halo is Josem. Note, I have two of them, because one of mine was an OG360 whose DVD drive broke, I ended up fixing due to being out of warranty, and in the meantime, bought an arcade unit, because I never actually expected the fix to work. Anyways, eventually my roommate moved out to another place, but I would still invite her boyfriend over to our gaming sessions, when I held them. This goes on for a couple of months and everything is normal. Sometime later he texts me asking me if I'm selling my seconds box because he's broke at home. I tell him no because I'm one of those weird guys that keeps everything electronic if it's functional. He says okay in kind of a dejected voice and I go on living my life. 
A couple of weeks later, I'm casually cleaning up my apartment and realize that my second 360 is gone from its location. TV that it had be connected to is still there. Everything else in my apartment is still around. The only thing missing is my 360 only used for LAN parties. In a panic, I'm running around looking to see if anything else is stolen, and I realize that, living alone, and in a 6th floor apartment, there are no signs of break-in and nothing else is stolen. Not even my good and new 360. It then dawns onto me that either he, or my former roommate must have used the key, snuck in, and taken the damn thing. So, I give him, we'll call him Navin, the benefit of the doubt, and call his cell. I ask him whether I lent my 360 out to him and forgot, I figure, to get my sheet back, it'd be better to give him an out than dealing with the police and whatnot. Navin replies with no, I, I uh, don't think so. Which leaves me with the option of investigating and calling the police. I talk to my ex roommate slash Navin's girlfriend, we'll call her Jenny, and explain to her that I firmly believe that Navin stole my ex BOX. She instantly goes to his side and says no, it can't be. Listen, Navin was accused by his neighbors of stealing things and they didn't prove anything. He was innocent. Why would he steal something now? Are you sure you didn't misplace it? Why didn't I think of that? Of course I misplaced it. Because who doesn't casually walk around all day with an XBOX 360, like it's faking keys in a pocket? Also, excuse if I'm wrong, but if your partner were accused of stealing things in the past, wouldn't you be more questioning of his behavior before siding with him? Anyways, being the unhelpful doof that she is, Jenny ends up sticking to Nav inside and is reluctant to help me out. I ask that next time she's over at his place to check the serial number on those box and see if it matches mine. She gets offended and says no. I immediately call up the police to explain the entire situation, but I'm at an impasse because he used my keys, probably copying them from when he was dating Jenny. Not only do I have to replace my locks, I also don't have any proof of forced entry. There's no dusting for prints or CSI sheet because the Navin's been over before and there's nothing that ties him to the theft. The cops only real advices, don't talk to either one of them. Basically, I have nothing for a few months. That is, until Rock Band 3 arrived. I love video games, I love Rock Band. So when Rock Band 3 arrived with its sweet new keyboard, I wanted to put it on a stand, so I could stand and play the damn keys. Yes, I'm a nerd. Remembering that I owned an old music stand that could hold up the keyboard, I search my apartment, only to stumble upon a broken XBOX 360 stuffed under one of my cabinets. How do I know it's immediately broken? Because it's missing the freaking plastic cover. What it's not missing, however, is a serial number, which is still on the damn thing. I immediately call up Microsoft and ask whose account the console's attributed to they say that they're unable to give out names because of privacy concerns. Watching a lot of all the president's men, I ask the lady on the other line what if I tell you who I think owns the XBOX and you reply with a yes or no? I mention Navin's full name and she concedes. I finally have something. So, with that, I call the police and ask if I can accuse him of theft now that I have evidence that he broke into my place. The policeman says sure, but to be honest, it's long and messy, and we can't guarantee you'll get yours box back. Try telling him that you have proof, and you might be able to get it back without having to press charges. So I call Navin up, and the lies start coming. First off, I ask him where his broken XBOX is. He says he put it in the trash. I ask him when. He says he can't remember. I tell him I'll help him out, and that it's in front of me as we're speaking on the phone. He goes silent and says he has no idea how his broken XBOX got there. I ask him if he's either a faking idiot or the worst thief of all time because he had half a brain, he wouldn't have left any proof of his break-in behind. He admits that he stole my XBOX and placed his busted one in my apartment, but the locks were changed before he could retrieve it. His thinking was that I would figure it as my own and fix it. Because, naturally, I wouldn't notice that. This XBOX had no plastic casing B. This XBOX was unplugged and under a cabinet C. This XBOX had an HDMI port on the back. Navin offers to return my stolen 360 and I say no. 
I tell him that I'm pissed off at him because of the shit I had to go through, changing my locks and worrying about getting my house invaded while I was out. How embarrassed I was in calling up Jenny and accusing someone I considered a friend of being a thief. Navin apologizes and says that Jenny had no idea that he stole it. I say that's nice because she wasn't willing to help me in any way. So with that, I tell him that he's not allowed to return the XBOX to me. He has to return my stolen XBOX, plus money for the lock change, over to Jenny and have her give me all my sheet. Basically, I wanted to have Navin admit to her that he was a thief and that she was a sheety friend for not helping me out when I asked her to. If he didn't comply, I would talk to the authorities and have him possibly arrested. And so he does. Now, here's the best part, I eventually go over to Jenna's new apartment to pick up the stolen goods, and she's angry at me. She's angry at me because she had to hear her boyfriend tell her that she's a thief and blames me for screwing up their relationship. She also accuses me of being a bully to him while we were dating. This is bullshit. I never bullied the guy. Ever. I tell her she's in denial that her boyfriend is a thief and that she's literally blaming the victim. I take all my stuff, bring it back home, and haven't talked to either of those two people ever again. Cut off cleanly and coldly, she's tried to contact me over the past two years to apologize for her behavior the day I went to pick my stuff up, but I don't forgive because I know when the chips are down, she's not a good friend or person. On the plus side, 8 player Halo is pretty sweet. Local co-op is where it's at. When I was fresh out of high school I was offered my first credit card. I figured, hey this is probably a good way to build my credit for later in life, so I'll make small purchases and pay it off. So I applied. Next week or so I get my card in the mail and was pretty ecstatic about it. Then I noticed on the top of the paper that was sent to me that my credit line was $7,000. I thought, wow, pretty faking sweet. But it didn't cross my mind as to why it was that high to begin with, so charge away I did. Now keep in mind I was 18 years old with a $7,000 limit on my first credit card, and that was a really bad idea, I probably ran up about to k my first month. Anyways, I get a call from Chase and Capital One to confirm that I wanted to cancel my account about a few days after I broke the $2,000 mark. Confused, I said no, I didn't authorize a cancellation, and when I said I don't even have an account with you, they sounded confused and said okay. During this time I applied for my first job as a tech assistant for a BMW dealership, and was asked for my social security number. Sure enough I thought, well this is gonna be an easy process. Nope. I got red flagged, because there were another person linked to my social security number. What the fuck? Amigul Gaza was linked to my social. Now, I'm a pretty white guy with a pretty white name and I knew something was up, so until I cleared the issue I couldn't work at the job. Later that day I called up the major credit companies, Experian, TransUnion, ETC, and found out that this other me had opened three credit accounts, purchased a house and a car, and paid them on time every month. So I called all the companies to which I have been with for the last 6 years, and cancelled all the cards and everything listed under my name that wasn't mine, went down to the social security office with my birth, documents and everything needed to secure my identity. Found out later, that the reason the companies were calling me was, because Miguel was getting charged for the $2000 worth of sheet I was buying, and tried cancelling my account linked to my slash our social security number, and saying I stole his identity. The banks ended up closing out each account as they couldn't determine which charges were mine or his, started an investigation on the matter, found out he was an illegal immigrant who got a hold of my social somehow, ended up getting deported, and I ended up keeping my credit rating of a 781, and was wiped clean of any previous unsecured debt charged by me, or by Senior Miguel. TLDR, had my identity stolen by an illegal immigrant, had the criminal call my bank to cancel my account on my social that he was using because he was getting charged by someone who apparently stole his identity, he got deported, and I kept my amazing credit score. I went to a party in college with a friend, got nice and drunk, bought no girls, and then left because the line to the single bathroom was six deep, and I had to go. 
as I stood outside peeing in the bushes, a light bobbed towards me in the darkness. My roomie being the experienced guy he was, shouted cop and booked. I stood there like an idiot, still peeing. Do you know what you're doing? Shouted the cop. Peeing on some bushes. You can't do that. I couldn't hold it. We conversed for another minute or so, but as soon as the few remaining drops of intelligence drained into the bushes, my drunk brain decided that now would be a good time to run, and I took off like a ninja track star. Two steps later, I noticed that something was wrong, and a few steps after that, I identified the problem. My left foot was stepping on the grass my right foot was stepping on the sidewalk the sidewalk was around 3 inches higher than the grass. A quick flash of black but the pirate commanding the Queen Anne's revenge in high seas shot through my mind. But I banished the distraction because the cop was hot on my tail. I rounded the corner of the house, ran into a knee high pile of dirt, and fell face first into the hole on the other side. Shoo hash one was lost forever and I half hoofed it out of the hole and through the backyard. I still remember the sensation of grass on my one bare foot. My ninja self hightailed it across the street, then I vanished from sight by jumping over the top of a row of bushes, directly onto the neatly stacked cord of wood behind them. Shoo hash 2 was voluntarily discarded at this point, and paranoia was high, because surely the entire police force was on the chase. I needed a hiding place as soon as possible. I stealthily made my way through backyard neighborhoods and came upon a home that had basement window wells, the perfect hiding spot. Supporting detail, the heat would need to comb the entire city to find me. This was before canine units became common, so dogs weren't a consideration. Note, I couldn't have been more than a block and a half from the scene of the crime. I sat in the window well, plotting the next stage of my escape, when a pretty young girl walked up to the back steps. I thought the jig was up, since I was sitting there, fairly well lighted, and smoking a cigarette, and the window I chose to go to ground, in was at best 5 feet away from the steps. So naturally I said hi there. The girl choked off a scream, but quickly regained her composure, and entered into a pleasant short lived chat with me. However, our burgeoning connection was cut off by dad coming to the back door, and it was time for me to book it out of there. The rest of the journey across town was uneventful, and I had spent the rest of the night regaling my escape to my drunken roommate, and fell asleep with a job well done smile on my face. The next day I was pulled out of class, and sent to speak with the officer who had chased me the night before. It turned out I had given him my full name, and in town of 3000 with one college, I was easily tracked down and cornered. The charges were public urination and obstruction of justice. Sober but still brilliant, I approached the upcoming court date with the most devious strategy ever. I would plead guilty and take my medicine and get this unpleasantry over with as quickly and painlessly as possible. When the time came, I drove to the county courthouse, took a number, and waited in the courtroom. The judge was merry and cracked jokes as he shipped people up the river for DUIs, check fraud and other offenses, then my turn came to face the music. Obstruction of justice carries a maximum sentence of one year in jail and a $1,000 fine. Let whoa. My planned guilty plea just turned into a roulette wheel. Should I back out or forge ahead with my plan? My mouth decided. Guilty, your honor. I had to see this through. Are you sure about that mister? Yes, your honor. Time ceased to exist and contingency plans. Keep the soap in a sock. Tie sock to wrist were made while I waited. $25 fine, 1 month probation, pure, criminal, genius, edit minor corrections. Since reddit loves its bad as old men, here's the best I have from my own grandfather, even if I'm a bit late to the game, so I used to mow the lawn for my grandfather, when I was in high school, his place was about a 20 minute walk from my house, so I just sucked it up, and walked there most of the time. One week I show up at his place, and I see that there is a bike sitting in his living room, leaning against a wall. Now, my pop pop was probably 83 at the time, and although he's still pretty damn fit for his age, he's not about to go biking anytime soon. Story is, the day before, some neighborhood hooligans thought that they should try and break into his shed out back, which is just full of crap, honestly. What they didn't count on was my grandfather seeing them out of the kitchen window. So out comes this 6 feet 4 inches 83 year old gentleman carrying a shovel, walking all nonchalantly out to his shed. 
One of the kids apparently saw him and alerted the others. They bolt, but one of them dashes off leaving his bike net to the shed. A few hours later, after he's brought the bike inside, there's a knock at his door. Pop Pop gets up from playing solitaire on his Pentium 3 and goes to the door to meet the kid who broke into his shed and left his bike, asking for it back. Pop Pop tells him that there are only two ways that he's going to give the bike over. 1. Your parents come with you to talk to him and pick it up. Or 2. He calls the cops and they can give it back to the kid if they like. After he presses charges. My grandfather never saw the kid again. TLDR. Some kids broke into my grandfather's shed and I got a new bike for it. Last fall three of my college friends and I moved into a pretty sheety neighborhood in Brooklyn, New York. It was all we could afford, being right out of college. So we just looked on the bright side. Three weeks after we moved in, when I was leaving work, one of my roommates called me saying we had been broken into. When I got back everything was gone. They had broken in through the fire escape, and since my room was connected to the fire escape, I was hit the hardest. All of my cameras, lenses, my computer, spare cell phones, iPads, iPod and even some of my clothes taken. I sound like a spoiled kid, but I started two successful companies before I turned 20 so shut up. Between all of us, it was well over $10,000 worth of sheet. After the cops came and did their thing, they informed us there was little to do, and they probably weren't going to get anything back. So we just went on with life all bummed that all our things were taken. A month later we were sitting in the living room watching TV, and one of them asked me what my Twitter picture was. At the time it was of me doing a keg stand, and I thought it was bae. Just me being one bad mathafaka they were like um no that's a black kid. Took a look at it, and sure enough it was some random kid that I had never seen before. Apparently the kid was having some fun in photo booth on my Mac and thought this one was just right and Twitter worthy. He tried to update his profile picture, but failed to realize he never logged out of my Twitter. I sent the picture to my detective, and they knew who it was. Unfortunately when they arrested him, he had ditched my computer and he only had one of my old cell phone on him. Because of that, they are only able to pin procession of stolen property and not the entire robbery on him. He went to Rikers for 6 months and I got nothing back. Not even the phone they recovered on his person. TLDR, I got burglarized, caught him because of Twitter. This happened a year ago, I was robbed at knife point by a couple of thugs at my apartment parking garage when I was getting back from work. They took my iPhone and wallet, I thought they were bright enough to ask for my cell phone passcode and verify it. Well, not really. After calling the 911 and going through with the standard procedures, I finally went to bed at 5am in the morning. I logged into the find my iPhone page from my Mac. And there it was, my cell phone was in the apartment complex right opposite to where I stayed. They hadn't even bothered to turn the phone off. I immediately called the cop who was assigned to my case with this information, but his reply was, is it possible to get the location of your phone within 5 to 10 feet of its presence? This obviously wasn't possible, so he asked me to continue tracking it. I tracked it throughout the next day, I even knew where those guys went for lunch. Finally, at the end of that day, the cell phone came to a halt at a mall some 5 miles from my place. It was there for more than 3 to 4 hours and I called the cop again to check it out. He gave the usual reply of I will get to it soon, but I was not able to rest peacefully, knowing the exact location of the cell phone. And by this time, the cell phone was also switched off, so I was no longer able to track it. So I and my roommate went to the mall and identified the last known location of my phone. It was a second-hand cell phone shop. I was pretty much sure that that is where my phone had landed finally and sent the Google map images of my phone's locations to the cop and charge. He was supposed to take care of it but slowly, he started ignoring my calls and emails. Finally, after a month, when all hope was lost, a different cop called me and told me that he had been newly assigned to the case and that he would like to go over the Google map images again. After two days, I got an email from him saying that the iPhone had been recovered from the same cell phone shop that I had gone to with my roommate and that they are working on apprehending the suspects. The suspects weren't apprehended and the wallet was gone forever, but I at least got my cell phone back. 
My parents and I drove our dirt bikes to a ditch in town that was getting a little gross from litter to clean it up one afternoon. No, this wasn't mandatory community service. It's just something we did periodically. Anyhow, we parked the dirt bikes and were walking down the ditch cleaning up and talking and stuff. And my dad looks back and is like what the fuck. There is a dude hoss put on one of the helmets and is sitting on the bike. So we start walking back towards the guy, and as we are going, we can hear the guy trying to start it. My dad was being really cool about this, and so we just walked casually the entire distance. A couple of times the guy managed to start it, but stalled as soon as he tried to drive anywhere. It was a two-stroke, and had a pretty touchy clutch. Anyhow, we get to him, and the entire time we'd been walking towards him, he still hadn't noticed us, until we were right there. My dad just asked hey buddy, having problems? The guy was like oh, yeah, my dirt bike is having problems and my dad was like well, you keep popping the clutch, try again. So the guy tries a few more times and fails and my dad started asking him all kinds of questions. What kind of bike it is, if has out of gas, what kind of oil it takes. The guy just kept getting more and more sheepish as my dad asked these questions. Eventually my dad was like we both know that these are our dirt bikes keep in mind there were two others parked there with nobody on them and the guy was just totally embarrassed and said with resignation yeah why don't you take off that helmet and just get out of here my dad asked and the guy just muttered something like yeah that's a good idea it was pretty sweet I learned a lot from my father that day when I was around 10 or so, I borrowed my 14 year old brother's bicycle and was just riding around the neighborhood. One of the older neighbor kids, roughly the same age as my brother, thought he was a badass. He'd pick fights, lie, steal, you know, the generic petty suburbanite one ape sheet. Well, he decided he wanted the bike, stopped me, and took it. He tried the all you tell anyone, I'll beat you up line and everything. I wasn't there for the rest, but it's a story my brother likes to tell quite a bit. When my brother found out, he was none too pleased. He went to this kid's house and saw the bike leaning against a wall inside their garage. Rather than just take it back and be done, he decided this kid needed to be taught a lesson. He rang the doorbell, and sure enough, the kid who took it answered the door. There's some back and forth about whose bike it is, and he finally yanks the kid out of his house and proceeds to beat the evil living sheet out of him. By this point, the kid's mom calls the police, and the dad runs out to break up the fight. My brother turns on the dad, gets a few good hits in, and the dad backs off. My brother goes back to wailing on the kid. The cops were just around the corner, so response time was pretty good. As they pull up to the house, he lets the kid go puts his hands up and doesn't struggle when the cops throw him in the back of the car. I don't remember if my brother got charged with anything or even if he spent a night in juvie or anything like that. I know he has. I just don't remember if this was one of them. We did get the bike back though and that kid stopped picking on the rest of the neighborhood not really a stupid criminal story other than being retardedly obvious but I like this story and it fits the mood of the thread. My brother and I were driving down the interstate at about 2am and there is a car on the side of the road. We don't think much of it, because a car on the side of the interstate is not that unusual of a sight. Just as we are coming up on it, it starts pulling onto the interstate with no lights on. My brother just barely has enough time to swerve into the other lane and miss hitting him. What we didn't see was the car that was on the side of the road in front of the first one. That guy decides that he is going to make a U-turn right there in front of us. So, we T-bone the driver's side door, careen through the median taking out many posts, and, ironically, a no U-turn sign, and end up stopping blocking the other two lanes of the interstate. As soon as we stop, the other driver jumps out the passenger side door, jumps in the other car and takes off. Luckily, there was nobody coming in the other lanes and a semi blocked both lanes with his flashers on. A word to the wise, if you are going to run after an accident, take your cell phone with you. My brother was sitting with the police officer while he used the kid's cell phone to call his parents. Oh, and on top of that, my brother cracked a couple of ribs and had to go to the hospital. So, the kid probably got out of a possible alley, but got slapped with leaving the scene of a personal injury accident, which is worse. 
TLDR, an idiot left his cell phone behind after fleeing a personal injury accident and the cops called his parents with it. I was working late at a hotel slash conference center and left at around midnight. My car was the only one parked in the particular lot I was in, but I noticed there was a car idling out past mine with their lights on, as if they'd simply stopped while they leaving. So, naturally, my attention shifts to that car, wondering what the hell they were doing. Well, as I approach my own car, I see movement inside as some dude who had been lying across the seat pops up and runs for it. I assumed he was running back to his buddy in the car, so I don't bother to give chase or anything. I yelled at him what the fuck are you doing? He runs straight at the car, from which emerges one of the crazier hotel security guards. He levels a gun at the guy, who was running from my car and yells stop or I'll shoot. The, presumed, crackhead never misses a beat and runs straight past the security guard who, thankfully, doesn't pull the trigger. I end up yelling at him over it, as in what the fuck are you thinking, you don't shoot people for breaking windows. He didn't get anything. The security guard had rolled up on him as he was trying to steal my crappy as car stereo. My employer, the hotel, paid for my window to be replaced, only after I threatened never to work late again, and I got some cool burglary tools a crackhead left behind. Actually, just a screwdriver and a flashlight. We moved about two years ago, and, due to the real estate market not being in a good enough shape to sell it, still own our house on the other side of town which sits reasonably far back off the road on a very private plot of land. You can see the long driveway from other points in the area though, so I guess eventually people caught on that there were no cars there, as well as a for sale sign. For a long time, we put ADT signs outside, but no actual system indoors to deter potential thieves, but one time we drove by the house, just to check up on the place and the back door, cheap, had been kicked in. Unfortunately for the burglar, his kick caused the wood to flap out to the left and block his hand from being able to reach the deadbolt, so he wasn't able to get in. I did however, have my own rudimentary security system in place. I had a dear camera from Cabela's which snaps a digital photo whenever something in the frame has changed, like a deer or a person passing through. We called the state police and I handed the officer the SD card which showed a reasonable description of the criminal. He also offered to drive up and check the house out over the next few days, in which he found the criminal who had driven up to the house in his vehicle and arrested him on the spot. It's a shame really. I hoped for a car chase. TLDR criminal busted in door couldn't even get in the house, dear camera got him, told cops, cops checked out house for the next week, and caught him trying again. My mom called me one day, while I was at school, to tell me my mechanic called her about something with my car, it was in the shop, and had been there for a few days, and I was getting tired of waiting for it, this was back, before I started handling my car issues myself. It was going to take another day or two because a wind needed to be replaced. Wait, what? My car was having engine Y type problems, nothing to do with my awesome rally windows. I was confused. I asked her to explain what happened to my window, and this is what she told me between chuckles. Someone broke into my old mechanic's garage to apparently get at some goods. In a garage, there are lots of pricey tools, and, in this one, lots of nice cars and one not so nice car. The office area of this garage was difficult to get into and was unharmed. There were no tools missing. None of the nice cars had been broken into. Only the little old Hyundai had been molested, and the only thing missing from that car was the glass that fell out instead of in. My car only had a tape player and random odds and ends people leave in their cars. I didn't even have a cell phone charger in there. Basically, this person went through all of the trouble of breaking into a mechanic's garage and got away with all of nothing. My mechanic felt bad about it, so he gave us a discount on my repairs as well as doing up the window for free, as he should have. TLDR. Apparently this thief was about as car savvy as a newborn. I once had a CD player in my car, the kind with a detachable faceplate for you to take with you, so that no one would ever be bothered to steal it. I, of course, was too lazy to detach and reattach the faceplate every time I entered or exited my car, so I left it together as one piece. 
Then I went back to my dad's house for one weekend, and someone broke into my car. Well, broke is a loose word, since back home is usually safe, and I'll leave my car unlocked, saved me the cost of a broken window, and ripped out the CD player. The funniest part to me was that they actually detached the faceplate and left it sitting in the passenger seat. It is also important to note that they also had to detach the CD changer remote from the player from back when trunk CD changers were wired in. Are they still wired now or all remote units so they must have known that I had a CD changer but they did nothing to take it. The reason I had a CD changer in the first place was that the dash player's laser was broken and wouldn't play discs. They ignored the trunk changer and left the faceplate in the car. They effectively stole half of an FM radio. No real monetary value to either of us, except the inconvenience on my part, but I really wish I could have seen the look on the pawnbroker's face when they walked in with it. Our house underwent attempted robbery a while back, while I was home with my sister and mom. My mom went outside to get something from her car and found someone casing it for an escape vehicle, I suppose. We learned the thieves had been dropped off. He gave a brief deer in the headlights look and said we thought nobody was home. So he and another guy ran back into the neighbor's fairly expansive cornfields, though they had been been harvested and were flat at the time. I'll learn about all this as mom comes inside screaming to call 9 double one, which I'm immediately doing with only moderate haste, as she's not even yelling half as loud as she is wont to do when she sees a 6 inch garden snake from 40 leagues. As I finally gather that there's an in progress robbery, I hand the phone off to her mid conversation and run out to the shed to make sure the guns haven't been raided yet. While the deer rifle and shotguns were still in the locker, dad had apparently used the .22 recently, and it was out, I'm the only one who de-chambers and puts away guns, and they had taken that. So I mentioned that to my mom, then shortly thereafter found the gun lying in the yard next to a plastic bag with some born stolen from the tenant's place, we rent out a mother-in-law apartment over the garage. In the meantime my mom had said the word gun to the police, which combined with an apparently slow day for local law officers, results in a small army of cops scouring our property in no time, who eventually found the criminals thanks to a stray dog that we proceeded to adopt and name trooper in after the first responding state troopers. Oh yeah, the dumb part. We learned that the neighbor's house, which is a palatial estate, unlike ours, haha, <laughs> was undergoing renovations or expansion or something, and they were out of town for the duration. Clearly someone in the know had tipped off some thieves that a very wealthy person's home was unoccupied and unlocked between some specific hours, and to just rob the place at their leisure. TLDR, the perfect crime, wrong address, suddenly 40 cops. Also, Take the guns when you're making your exit, lest you commit armed robbery. My college ID got stolen at a house party my fraternity was throwing one night. I had put my ID down on the beer pong table as a way to hold my spot in line, which was protocol at the party. At some point, whoever had stolen my card threw it back into the house, and one of my fraternity brothers found it and returned it to me. Early the next morning, I called up dining services to see if there had been any activity on my dining account which was linked to my ID. Someone had ordered dollar sign 30 worth of sandwiches. I called up the sandwich shop and got the name and phone hash of the person who had ordered the sandwiches. I then went on FB and searched by the phone hash. It came back with an exact match. The person had no privacy settings, so I was able to see all his info including where he lived. I went over this his dorm, tailgated someone in, you had to swipe your ID to get into dorms, and you can't get into a dorm that's not your own, and went straight to the guy's room. The door was unlocked, so I let myself in. I saw the guy's wallet on his desk, so I rifled through it, but found no cash. While I debated whether or not to take a dump on his desk, I was still slightly drunk at this point from the night before, and irate as hell, I noticed that the dude was in his bed sound asleep. I went up to him, slapped him a couple of times across the face to wake him up, and asked him for my dollar sign. He swore up and down that he hadn't stolen my card, and ended up writing me a check with a freaking pencil. He didn't have a pen. I told him, if the check bounced, I would be back, and there would be hell to pay. The check cleared. TLDR. 
Dude ordered food with my student dining ID. I used FB to track him down and walked right into his dorm while he was asleep to extract payment. Long time reader, first time poster. So, in my days working as a sales assistant at the media market, Target slash Walmart like store, in the TV section we had this hot air balloon giveaway action for people buying a certain model of TV. As was customary there was always one spot saved for a sales assistant who had done well the last month. I was picked, and I went flying in the hot air balloon with my dad's camera. A couple who seemed really nice wanted a photo as well, so I took it, got their ML address, and thought nothing of it. Few weeks later I see their faces on a really crappy security photo in our canteen, because they had been stealing navigators from the store. The next day I handed in the high res picture of the couple and their ML address. Police couldn't help us, it wasn't enough to go on, but at least security now had a very clear picture of who to watch. Sure enough, two weeks later, there are two children crying in the store because they can't find mommy and daddy. Turns out, mommy and daddy were being loaded in a cop car right about then. They came back and tried to take even more navigators and were caught red-handed. The security guy also handed them their hiree's picture. I would have loved to see their faces. TLDR couple wins a hot air balloon trip and store. Let a store employee take their picture and come back to the store to steal stuff. Idiots. Oh all this just reminded me of my mother's recent story. I hope I'm not too late for the party. To begin with, let me say that my mother is sheltered. She worked and brought home the bread for a long time, but it was always my dad who manages the finances, and we have a friend who works in a bank and helps us with all our related needs. My mother bought some clothes online for the first time and got a call the day later, saying there was a mistake in the system and now the purchase is set on monthly recurring payment for the next 12 months. In order to stop it, my mother must go to an ATM and follow their instructions. In other words, a standard ATM scam. My mother panicked and asked the scammer for instructions. Who started by? Okay, lady, first you go to the ATM and enter your PIN. Unfortunately for them, my mother's account doesn't have a PIN. It's set up specifically not to have one because she never ever touched an ATM until some 5 years ago. So she went hysterical, asking the scammer to put her in touch with the bank, after alternatively screaming I don't have a pin, and reprimanding the guy for bad service and incompetence. The scammer even got who must have been a female member of their syndicate, to make a second call, pretending to be a bank teller, and repeating the same instructions. My mother went hysterical at her too, demanding the phone be handed to our banking friend, and for her to explain everything. After a whole afternoon of back and forth, with the scammers feeling more than intimidated, they hung up after a wrap, sure, we'll just, uh, take care this by ourselves. She told my sister about it later that day, when she got off work, extremely panicked and agitated. My sister just laughed it off, knowing it must have been a scam. The stupid criminal was me. I was in first grade. I had been sent out of the classroom to sit in the hallway for being disruptive. I was bored and decided to start looking through my classmates' backpacks, which were lined up on wall hooks. I found a whole bunch of cash in this kid Jeffrey's bag. I took like half of it. My 6 year old brain determined that half wasn't quite as bad, or I wouldn't be as likely to get caught, or I wouldn't be in as much trouble, or something. I think I took about $80. So logically, I decided to buy ice cream for all the kids on my school bus. There was always an ice cream truck right outside my school, and there was enough time between school getting out and the bus leaving to buy ice cream. So I bought enough ice cream bars for everyone. Everyone loved me that day. I came home and probably had ice cream on my face. I put the money in a drawer. I must have been acting suspiciously because my babysitter found it before my parents got home. Also, the bus company called the school who called my parents to say that I had bought everyone ice cream. Despite my semi-altruistic use of the stolen money and only taking half of it, I was still in big trouble. Edit. I just remembered a detail that had been missing from this story for years. Jeffrey rode the same school bus as me. I guess I bought him ice cream with the money I stole from his backpack. It wasn't his money anyway, so he was probably just happy he got ice cream when he wouldn't otherwise. Also, 
Jeffrey and I ended up kissing during a game of spin the bottle at a mutual friend's bar mitzvah seven years later. TLDR. Don't put a large amount of cash in a six-year-old's backpack. I might steal it and buy ice cream for everyone. One summer long ago, when I was around 16, I was cruising around with my friend Will in his Mazda MX-6 and a nice day in the burbs. We had pulled into Safeway to get some gas. Pulling into the shopping center we noticed that on the side of the Safeway that there was five young men and a couple females. Nothing out of the ordinary, because school was out for the summer. So I'm chilling out in the passenger side, while Will is pumping gas, probably and most likely stoned off several blunts of marijuana when I hear Will yell out holy shit a purse snatcher and I also hear a distant scream in the distance. I instantly jump out of the car and look across the far side of the parking lot and I see a older lady laying on the ground next to her cart and three to four people chasing an African American teen around the parking lot. Almost instantly I say fuck that, and I'm running across the parking lot at Flash Gordon speed, and throwing the contents of my pockets into bushes along the way, so I wouldn't be slowed down. Not long do I catch up to the back of the pack of four middle-aged men chasing the teen with the purse around the parking lot, weaving in and out and around, and over cars in circle. Of course my heart is pumping I'm running faster than I've ever needed to- I quickly pass the Safeway employee and the other two plain clothes men, and I'm right on the tail of the thief with person had. It was one wrong move, and his part and he slowed down, when I had enough momentum to leap and tackle him, which I did slow in all what seemed slow motion. We both went down, and in the tackle I was able to snatch the purse from him, and throw it to safety. Instantly we pop up and up comes this gold Cadillac, with all the individual, that he was with inside. It was a little late for a getaway, and for the crime. So he's all yelling at me get the fuck off me, you ain't a cop fuck you let me go as I'm grabbing his arm not letting him reach for the car. He breaks free and instantly goes into fight mode. I rip my sheet off in now what seems a very primal intimidation technique and we are about to drop fists when finally the four other people chasing him catch up, and before I could sock this fool out one of the other chasers jumps between us in his plain clothes and pulls out his badge, and handcuffs the purse thief. The getaway car instantly screeched out, and I don't doubt that they got caught shortly after. The lady who got the purse ripped off of her had fell and broke her arm. So I remember, when it went to trial they had enough evidence to not need me, but that he was charged with a serious crime, because he injured the women. It was also in the local paper, but mentioned nothing about me, even when I was the one who walked the purse back to the lady, waited with her for the ambulance and outran a cop, it only mentioned the off-duty cop. TLDR I outran a cop, to stop a purse snatcher. My girlfriend had a roommate and close friend for years. They were abnormally close, as my girlfriend never questioned if her roommate were to sleep in her bed while she was away, or if she found her on the computer, which was also in my GF's room. Things were pretty much an open door policy between the two of them. Well my girlfriend and myself go on vacation for a week, and when we come back her room is 100% spotless. Cleaned from top to bottom. We thought, what a great gesture, and thanked her roommate for her hard work. A week later, we get a call from the bank about a $15,000 check being cashed in her name. We find her checkbook, every single check had been removed from the book. We didn't want to believe it was her roommate, although it was obvious, so we assumed a guest had been in her room. While we were gone two weeks later we get another phone call, this time from her credit card company. $1,000 in purchases have been made. We get more suspicious of said roommate two weeks later my own credit card is frauded for $2,000. I thought it was after I left my wallet in my GF's room one afternoon. A week later, my credit card gets frauded again for $1,000. Then my GF's again for another $1,000 as well as a subscription to Netflix. I call Netflix and request for the ML address used for the activation. Well well well. Her dummy friend and roommate of 4 years had used her ML address that just so happened to have her full name within it. Two weeks later, I moved my girlfriend out of that house and we've been living together ever since. We have no idea how her friend had the resources to pull off so many successful scams off of us, but we suspect that she was involved with some pretty savvy criminals who probably had connections to copy our credit cards to make their own. We never called the police on her. We just moved on with our lives. We got every penny paid back to us by the banks, 
but still, we felt incredibly violated. Our criminal wasn't dumb, per se, but was pretty damn brazen on the borderline of careless. My folks used to rent a place and the landlords lived in a town about 150 miles away so my folks would mail rent a week before it was due by placing the envelope in our mailbox and lifting the flag. In retrospect that may not have been the brightest idea, but the hood was pretty safe. One night my pops calls in from Italy while on a business trip asking me to log into his bank account as he suspects something isn't right. When I log in I notice that $7,500 is missing instead of the typical $2,100, then I got to see the check image. Apparently these morons bleach the check and rewrite it using a girly handwriting to sign my dad's name. The check was cashed in a Wachovia branch in Florida, we live in California. Check was put in the box a day before this discovery so city, my folks bank, Wachovia and the cops all agreed it was an inside job. On the bright side, City refunded the money within a few hours, opened new accounts for my folks, and had all automatic payments rerouted. Happy ending, I guess. I was on the receiving end of a barrage of death threats from a guy who used to be in a European mafia, class Bruns Marie TC, as well as having links to the IRA and Turkish nationalist groups, and was big in the South American drug scene as well. Due to his Latino wife, and he had murdered people in the past as well as attempted murder in his locality within the UK. Once a good family friend, reformed his ways, although I did go along on some smuggling trips with him, but he turned nasty, accused me of theft and him, and his yappy alcoholic mate began to threaten my family and I, I was at university at the time. Anyway, I get a phone call from the alcoholic friend, and by this point the police are in my uni dorm listening to the phone call on loudspeaker. It was pissing down with rain outside, and the call went, from memory, a bit like this, I'm gonna come up there, I know where you fackin' live, and break your legs, you hear me, you're a sneaky little sheet fack, repeated swearing until I hung up. The police knew exactly where he was, as he was walking up the hill to where I lived, and they got in the car and drove down the hill, to find a man who had slipped off the curb, with an open can of Stella in the gutter and a backpack containing a knife, among other personal effects. The dopey twat had slipped off the curb in the rain, whilst drunk, and broke his ankle. Heard nothing more after that. I love my story. I was going to a friend's house on the border between a hipster and ghetto neighborhood in Milwaukee, north of Locust and River West, for those of you familiar with the area. I parked my car across the street and saw three shady looking guys walking down the sidewalk. It was probably about 9-ish. I shrugged it off, got out, locked my car, and crossed the road to their house. About halfway across I hear footsteps running up behind me. One of these shady dudes pulls my purse off of my shoulder, and instead of letting that be that, he starts digging around in it, right in front of me. He asks me where the money is, to which I reply, in the wallet. He can't seem to understand what a girl wallet looks like, and hands it back to me, demanding I take out the money. Mind you, I only had about $12 cash on me. I flipped all my credit cards away from him to hand him the green. He then demands my phone, and as I hand it to him, he grabs for my keys. I scream at him not to take them. He abides. He then runs off. So, instead of just grabbing my purse and booking it, causing me to lose everything, I only lose $12 and my phone. I go into my friend's house, freaked out. I mean, I still did just get mugged. I later found out that the guy had a gun on him. Luckily my cockiness didn't result in a pistol whipping. I go online. Shut off my phone, and debate on reporting what happened. I was like a, a phone and $12. Totally replaceable. So I didn't. But, about 45 minutes later, my friend gets a phone call. It's the cops, trying to find me, by going through my contacts. Turns out the kids went, and mugged two girls up by UWM and got caught. Long story short, ended up kicking it with two superb ad style detectives all night, and had to drive back down to Milwaukee for three court dates, all resulted in not actually having to go to court over $12. Smart faking mugger. Making me pay the system more than I paid him. I worked loss prevention, store security, at a retail store in college. It was pretty mundane work most of the time, but every now and then I'd catch a shoplifter or an employee stealing stuff. 
One of the stupider criminals I busted was a middle-aged Hispanic gentleman who was stealing perfume bottles and cheap, crappy costume jewelry. I stopped him and brought him back to the office, adrenaline running from making a rare shoplifter bust. We get there and he pretends not to speak English, assuming the 20-year-old gringo who just busted him won't know what to do, so I started talking in Spanish, probably the one and only time that my four years of studying it in school has been useful. I thought he looked familiar, so I pulled up an old tape I had saved from a previous theft where I didn't have enough evidence to make the stop, and sure enough it was the same guy, wearing the exact same clothes. When the cop came, he went with me into the tape room to see what I had. I told him about the second tape and how I didn't think we had enough for an arrest. So he asks me, can he hear us out there? And I told him that yes, if we talk loud enough. So he says, loudly, wait, so you've got him on tape a second time, oh, yeah, we'll book him for both. He goes back out to talk to the guy who now speaks perfect English and asks him if he's ever been here before and stolen anything. The guy says why are you asking me, you've got it on tape, you know this isn't the first time. Another bizarre incident happened when I got a call from a local detective investigating a credit card fraud case. He said that they saw the card was used fraudulently at our store to make a $500 purchase, but they needed to know what was bought as part of a search warrant they were putting together. So, being the enthusiastic young sleuth I was, I quickly looked up the card information and pulled up the transaction. They bought a $500 gift card, which they then came back and used to buy a nice flat screen TV and a $7 body pillow. I'm not sure if that made it onto the warrant, but I was amused imagining how that would play out in court. When I was about 13 years old I was at a youth center where kids used to hang out on Fridays to play pool, watch movies, break dance, play games, all sorts of things. While we were dancing I believe I left my cell phone out on a table and somebody stole it. I remember I was super sad and also really scared because I had just gotten the phone and having one back then was a big deal. My dad told some friend of his what happened and the next day while I was home with my mom, our phone rings. My dad asked me to go see him at some apartment not far from where we lived. Inside the apartment there was my dad, a friend of his, and some man I didn't know. I remember that it looked scary as fuck. Three dudes sitting in the kitchen under the lamp and the only thing you could see were their faces and the smoke from cigarettes. I was handed a phone and asked is this yours? I took a quick look. I went through the phone book and all my contacts were still there. I said yes and proved it. So it turns out some kid stole my phone, sold it to some guy who was friends with my dad's friend. The thief was gonna drop by with a charger later, which wasn't true because I still had the charger at home. We asked him if he wanted any compensation, he did after all pay like $200 for the phone, but he said no, I know some people, I'll get my money back, so I got my little Ericsson back and went home. TLDR, lost my phone, some suspicious foreigner gives it back to me, thief probably got his ass kicked for it. Two years ago, when I was still living on campus at my college, people attempted to steal my bike on two separate occasions. Background info on my bike, bought at a church rummage sale for $10, fixed up for $50, is in city bike style, really high seat and super light in weight, also, is blue. The lock I used for it was just a simple coil lock, the ones that could easily be broken by a big wire cutter. The first time was when it was parked at the bike rack right outside my dorm during the winter, and I looked out my window to check on my bike one morning to see that it was on the ground. I went down to take a closer look, and it had been pulled as far away from the bike rack as possible, as if the thief was trying to break the lock with sheer muscle power alone. Tangent, I texted a photo of it to my friend, who sent back the response, it looks like it's been run over by a moose. After an unsuccessful attempt at stealing the bike, they also unsuccessfully stole my bike chain. I just had to put it back on the track. The second time occurred some months later, in front of the union. I had come back late from class and was going to pick up my bike after having it parked there for a few days. I almost didn't recognize it because someone had tried too hard to steal my bike that they removed the black plastic covering the mechanics of the lock. 
I may or may not have pumped my fist in the air in victory of still having a bike. Also, I honestly would have laughed if anyone did manage to steal it for the bike itself. It's a screaming metal death trap. Every time I use the brakes or attempt to use them, it can be heard several hundred feet away. A couple years ago me and a friend had our laptops stolen. I went to college in Chicago and continued to live there because it rocks and thus got the chance to see a lot of bands that didn't stop in smaller towns such as Porcupine Tree. PT had a concert on a Friday towards the end of the semester when things were winding down, so three of my friends came up to see them and stay the weekend. We have a great time at the concert and spend the next day dicing around Chicago and get home from a comedy show at Improv Olympics around 2am and head to bed pretty shortly after. We were still in the dorms at this point and the rooms were pretty small, so to make use of our space we had a couple of our desks out in the living room. Mine was out there with my laptop, and one of my buddies leaves his charging on the desk too. I had a couple other roommates who were super nice guys, but weren't so responsible. They bring some weird dude home from a party, after we are all asleep and this guy, drunk and high out of his goddamn mind, leaves my two roommates to have probably really deep conversations about how like, life is so chill, and we just got a chill or some shit. My buddy and I wake up the next morning and find our laptops missing. After searching the room we find this weird dude's jacket in a pile on the chair by my desk. He had piled my digital camera and headphones on top of his jacket, and in his pockets we found multiple wallets and iPods along with his student ID, so we figured this dude was our culprit. We call the campus police and they verify everything that happened, and fill in the gaps for us. So, when this dude leaves my room it's in their room. He swipes our laptops and heads down the hall, where he tries an unlocked room and takes another laptop, and, in my favor a detail of this whole thing, a box of Reese's Puffs. In his high drunken stupor, he must have forgotten that he left his jacket and student ID in his room, which he needed to get back into his own dorm. It was raining pretty hard that night, so as he's standing outside of the gate of his dorm, he slides my laptop and the laptop from down the hall under the gate and apparently attempted to climb over, but couldn't make it. Here's where the super dumbness comes in. Dude calls his rat to come let him in. His rat then asks what's with the three laptops, to which he replies with I found them. They don't buy it, obviously and the cops are called. So we get our stuff returned to us, right after we talk to the campus police and thankfully, my friend's laptop was not slid under the gate, and thus not rained on forever and is undamaged. Mine, however, was a MacBook, which are apparently notorious for not taking water damage well. I decided not to sue the kid right then and there to see if I can salvage the hard drive without having to ruin the kid's life, but it became pretty clear that I wasn't going to get anything off of it pretty quickly. Long story short, some legal filings later, and I get reimbursed, and get a shiny new laptop. Pretty sure the thief was expelled from our university. TLDR. Dude steals a few laptops from a dorm room and leaves his ID in our room, preventing him from getting himself into his own dorm and simultaneously incriminating himself. Calls Rhett to let him in, and they notice the extra laptops, and call the cops. I woke up one night when I was about 16 and saw what looked like someone upside down looking in at me from the window. Of course I scream and freak out, but my parents check and they don't see anything and tell me to go back to sleep. I could not sleep well and the dog kept barking at my window all night. Then there is a big commotion. Turns out that a man who was hiding from the cops, they had helicopters looking for him and everything, decided to hide on my roof by my window. As morning came he decided to hide his drugs in my neighbor's yard and escape. Unfortunately for him, my neighbor is a gun-wielding Mexican, and he dragged that guy out front at gunpoint, we live in a court. Now all the neighbors are coming out. The guy is obviously super high, and saying things like calm down man, I don't mean any harm, but can I go get the drugs are left in the playhouse in your backyard? At which point the neighbors started to beat him up. They beat him so hard one of them broke their own foot, and another neighbor broke his own fingers. But the guy they were beating was too high to feel it or something, because he just kept saying things like dude, why are you hitting me, calm down, I just need to leave before the cops get here. 
the cops came after an hour and a half, didn't say anything about the obvious beating, and just took the guy away, and they forgot to take the drugs with them. My neighbor complained a lot about this. At least my parents apologized to me, and the dog for not believing us. TLDR. Guy hides from cops on my roof, gets crap beaten out of him by my neighbor. Wasn't me, but my roommate. We moved in together this past February, and a coworker of hers offered to help her pack up. My roommate keeps an emergency credit card in the bottom of one of her drawers, and never uses it, so she knows to expect a zero balance on it. So my roommate finishes the move with the help of Cow Walker, and surprise surprise, two weeks later she gets a call from the emergency cards company saying they saw unusual activity on her account. Of course my friend says none of the charges are hers, but requests a list of all the suspicious transactions. So my roommate begins sleuthing and finds, the person charged everything from groceries to GameStop games to the card. All of the places were within walking distance of each other, and occurred on the same day. Most of the places erased their video footage within a few days, so it was too late, but GameStop still had this, and the clerk happily gave a description of the person or persons who completed the transaction. The descriptions matched her cowalker and her cowalker's bum of a son. The date of the transactions matches the date her cowalker called in sick and didn't come in. Her cowalker doesn't have a car. So basically, it was the cowalker who did this. The sheety thing is, the Kaoka was in a really bad spot in life, and so my roommate had been doing things to help her. My roommate had bought her groceries several times, and obviously, one time against her will, had given her clothes and other items. An iPod was the most notable item, and had generally been there during a tough time. The biggest cause of the bad time was the Kaoka's idiot in great of a son, he was unemployed, had wrecked two of her cars in a year, had a DUI, and had dropped out of high school five years before. Best, aka worst, part. My room had reported it to the cops, after checking with GameStop to ensure they wouldn't delete the video. But the cops took so long to investigate, that GameStop ended up deleting the video, four days before the cops called them. Without video evidence, nothing was ever done. When I was in junior high, I played basketball. The junior high and senior high girls teams would both play on the same night, so we always shared a locker room. One time after the junior high game had finished, I changed in the locker room and noticed my phone, a pink razor, was missing. My coach knew I was responsible and hadn't just misplaced it, so he and I started looking through everyone's bags along with the principal before anyone could leave the locker room. Turns out one of the senior high players had stolen my phone. I had even personally searched her bag, but I guess she had hidden it in her bra or something. Gross. We found out because my mom went online and accessed my cell phone bill where she saw the girl had made a call to one of her old boyfriends. She gave the number to police, and they called the guy, and found out who had stolen my phone. That was just really stupid of her, stealing the phone of a teammate, and then using it without thinking she'd get caught. And it was, because she was out of minutes on her phone. Edit, TLDR, a girl on the senior high basketball team stole my phone from my gym bag in the locker room, when I was in junior high. She then called an old boyfriend and my mom turned in the info from the bill to the police who found out she had stolen it, all because she was out of minutes, not to sell or anything. My family owns a trailer rental service and has a fleet of several hundred tractor trailer trailers. We store these trailers in a lot and people have a tendency to abuse the area by dumping household and commercial garbage there. Normally the lot is closed off, but on some occasions, like being open for business, the lot is open. One fine hot summer day, we had a large medium duty dump truck pull into our storage lot across the street and proceed to dump a huge container of small building slash demo rubble, dangerously old slash rotten household garbage, and all sorts of disgusting junk. While the idiots were busy dumping the garbage all over our lot, we quickly manned a tractor and blocked off the access drive with a trailer they didn't hear or see us over the noise they were making. No way any kind of vehicle is getting in or out. While we waited a few minutes for the oblivious trashman to finish emptying out their truck, we jingled the PO. After a few minutes the truck was empty and we walked over to the trapped vehicle and its occupants. When they noticed us, their faces instantly went from a meh work look to a rofac, we a trapped look. Owner, 
So who told you that you could just dump trash in the middle of my parking lot? Them, are uh, so and so, our boss, told us to owner, and you thought that taking a truckload of garbage and dumping it on private property with no waste material handling, building, or any kind of personnel would be acceptable? Them, well, uh, uh, our boss said it would be okay owner, so your boss says it's okay to dump trash wherever you like. Them, well, we are just following orders owner, I'd love to have a chat with your boss. Cops show up at this point, their precinct is only a half mile down the road, cops make them stay for several hours and pick up every last crumb, shard, and glob of stinking, rotting, heavy nasty garbage. Cops clear truckers to leave, but not before issuing them several tickets for various infractions, pollution, inappropriate waste disposal, hazardous material violations, trespassing, etc. It felt really great to stand there and watch them pick up their own mess for an hour or two. After both the police and our expectations were satisfied, we moved our blockade and let them carry on. The icing on the cake was the directions to the nearest local dump, scrawled on a napkin, which were handed to the driver along with a bigger's grin. The driver was not amused. TLDR guys dump a huge truckload of garbage in our business parking lot, we block them in with tractor trailers until cops show up. Guys get a pile of tickets, cops force them to pick up every last crumb of filth, and we send them on their merry way with fuck you directions to the local dump and a sheet eating grin. I scored some free tickets to the local Major League Baseball team game, which was a big deal at the time, since they had just built a new stadium. I got 4 tickets from my friend, and ended up giving 2 of them to my mom to use. Game day comes around, and my buddy and I are throwing back a few pre-game cocktails, cause screw you. Baseball team owners, $9.50 for a Budweiser just isn't cool. We are getting a little tipsy, and my buddy asks to see the tickets so he can figure out where we are sitting. I hand them to him and head to the bathroom to drain the main vein, as they say. I come back and my buddy is chatting up some young thing next to him with his back turned to our table. That conversation ended up being a non-starter, so we headed to the ballpark. In front of the stadium we realize that he had left the tickets on the table at the bar and someone had swiped them when he was talking to the laddie friend of his. We knew we hadn't left them there since we both remembered there being nothing on the table. We talked to the ushers and let them know the score and they say that they can't help much since the tickets are non-refundable. Yada yada yada. Obviously the four tickets we had were right in a row so I call up my mom and let her know what happens. Long story short, she reconnoitres the Tuslosh gents that were in our seats and then informs the usher about what happened. After a brief q and a with the yellow shirt security force guy and the burly flak jacket wearing city cop, they admit to swiping the tickets and are led away. My buddy and I ended up being able to catch the rest of the game after the second inning, and the two yutzes that took our tickets were apparently charged with misdemeanor theft, at least according to the cop. TLDR two drunkards get busted by two other drunkards and a drunkard enabling mother. I guess I could share this. Everyone seems to have a horror story of papal or at least some kind of complaint. This has been primarily my only complaint of papal because I had to do the leg work. Anyway back about 7 to 8 years ago I was a very active seller on eBay. One particular sale item I've been selling was these little Fujitsu laptops. P1000 series, with the touch screens. Typically bidding ranged from 450 to 550. This particular instance someone jacked the bid up to dollar sign 750 slash 800 and obviously won the item. I was a little stoked and the winner paid rather promptly to boot which made me a very happy seller. I get this odd message after getting the PayPal payment from the buyer. He requested I send it to another address in a whole other state than the billing address given to me by PayPal. I shot the buyer back a message and said, sorry, but I can insure the product if it's sent to another address than the billing address. At the time, I don't know if PayPal still does this, but when sending to the certified billing address that is stored on PayPal the product is insured against fraud, and if there is a dispute I still make my money because I sent it to the approved billing address. Fast forward about 30 minutes and I receive another email from the buyer saying this is a present, blah blah blah, and that they would pay extra for the shipping. 
I got a little curious, and already in the back of my head the overbid of $300, and willing to give me more money I got a little uneasy. At this point I couldn't quite refund the money, because it wasn't 100% in my account, yet so I made a call to PayPal. I gave the person the information about what was going on, and got the reply, there isn't anything we can do, unless the person that has had their account hacked reports it. I responded, well I'm the seller, and I know for a fact, that this person's account is hacked, could you refund the money, and suspend the account until the owner contacts you? I got a hearty fuck off. So for whatever reason I punched in the billing address and the name of the individual under the billable address from PayPal into Google. The first result was the company that the hacked person's account owns in Washington state. I gave them a call and talked with the owner's secretary. I was told he wasn't in, yet so I gave her the lowdown and asked if he would call me immediately when he has a chance. About an hour later I get a call from the guy and explain what's going on and basically he has to make the claim to PayPal in order to get his account refunded etc. Well about 24 hours later PayPal takes the money back after he makes the claim and then they do the decision move possible. They suspend my account for suspicious activity. I shot them an ML along with the guy that had his account hacked and explained the situation. I got my account straightened out, and I'm fairly certain nothing happened to the guy that hacked the account, even though he gave a receiving address and name. Me and my cousin went to a John Mayer concert way back in the day, probably 8 to 10 years ago. It was in Pinsacola and Maroon 5 was opening. Anywho, my cousin wins a backstage pass to meet John Mayer, and in the excitement he drops his seat ticket somewhere in the stadium. We had really nice seats. Somewhere up front, very expensive for high schoolers on summer job money. My cousin got to hang out with John Mayer all through Maroon 5's opener. Meanwhile I did not win, so I just stayed in my seat and waited for him to come back. When suddenly this random girl comes and sits right next to me. Obviously, this was my cousin's seat, so I thought maybe she just mistook the row she was supposed to be on. We have all been there. I tap her on the shoulder and tell her that she must have the wrong seat. She says, no, see, and shows me the ticket. Yep, she's got the correct number alright. Now, I'm trusting guy. It didn't even occur to me that my cousin might have lost his ticket and some beach might have stolen it. So I just assume that some freak ticketing mistake must have occurred and they double book the seat somehow. I look around for my cousin as the Maroon 5 concert is coming to a close, hoping that they would be able to find a seat for him. I look to my right and there is my cousin waving at me a couple of levels up, behind the ushers who won't let him into the bottom level of the stadium. I go up there, and my cousin tells me they won't let him in, because he dropped his tickets. Oh shit, I think. That beach must have stolen your ticket. I tell him, and facip him for not having come to that conclusion sooner. We tell the nearest usher what happened, and they confront the girl. She claims to have bought the ticket, and accuses us of lying. What nerve this beach has to get, caught red-handed and continue lying. The usher tells us that, unless we can prove it, there is nothing they can do, and furthermore my cousin can't stay in the stadium, and see the concert without his ticket. WTF. We were so pissed. Unfortunately, he did not bring his receipt. However, he had paid for the tickets with his credit card. So, we marched up to the ticket booth and they validated our story. They sent three security guards and an usher down to remove this beach from her seat. They escort her out when her mom, who was seated in the nosebleeds, sees what is happening and starts yelling at security. It turns out that the mom, who had purchased the cheapest tickets possible, found my cousin's ticket on the floor and thought there was some kind of finder's keepers rule regarding tickets and that she should be allowed to use it, since my cousin lost it. After about a minute of the mom yelling at security, they kick her as out too, and give my cousin back the ticket. Felt good, even if we did miss half the concert dealing with these two idiots. TLDR went to concert, cousin lost ticket, redneck beach found ticket and stole seat, got evidence and got that skank and her mother thrown out of the concert. So many years ago, I went to a party with a friend. My friend passed out, and I hooked up with one of the guys living in this apartment. Well, I had left my purse in the kitchen, and we went on the balcony. While we were on the balcony, one of his roommates went in my purse, and stole my bank card and credit card out of my wallet. 
this was either Friday or Saturday night, I don't remember. Now, whatever else happened that weekend, it was stuff I didn't need my wallet for, so I was blissfully ignorant until Monday morning, when Discover called me, in reference to some charges on my card. Fun part? The credit card had been cancelled months ago by Discover, due to my failure to pay them. I asked the girl calling, why would I try to charge anything on it, when I know it doesn't work. She explained it seemed odd to them, as well, which was why they were calling. Check my wallet, everything had been rearranged, so I knew someone had been in my wallet. I wasn't out anything financially, so at least there's that. But here's a crappy part. I told my friend, that had taken me to the party what had happened, and he refused to believe me. He'd met these guys just a couple days before, on WoW, and took their word over mine, and we'd been good friends for years. That hurt. We quit talking over that. TLDR. Friend meets people on WoW. Takes me to a party. Guy steals cancelled credit card. Kids once tried to shoplift a skimboard from a surf shop I frequented. By stuffing it up his hoodie. Now, this kid is like 12. Thin lanky little sheet. Tough talking, loud mouthed suburban gangster type. Obviously a tourist, if you knew the area. If you're unfamiliar with what a skimboard is, it's a sort of teardrop shaped board that you throw in the shallow surf on the beach and hop on and just skim along. Skimboard. Skimboards are about a meter wide. And this kid is about half that width, trying to stuff it up the back of his hoodie and tries walking out the door. I block the door, call the owner from the back. The kid starts shoving me, cussing at me, trying to fit through me and the door with the board still up his hoodie. The owner comes up, old surfer type, imagine the dude mixed with a viking, grabs the kid by the hood, drags him back inside the shop, makes the kid call his parents, they were a few stores down the block, and has them come to the shop. Cops were called too. Very angry parents, and very amused cops showed up. Kid acted all tough. Parents said put him in cuffs, and the police obliged. He started crying like a baby. He spent about 20 minutes in the squad car. Freaking out, crying, and ended up pissing his pants. No charges. Parents took the kid away. Board was returned. I'd say justice was served. In the second grade, I bought a new green plastic pencil sharpener. I took it to school and got it stolen. But I knew who it was. It was this girl who likes to steal other people's stuff. She always got away with it by lying to the teacher. So I confronted the girl, but she denied taking it, and said her mom bought it for her. I was a quiet kid who didn't want to be in trouble, so I let it slip, but I hated her. So fast forward a week later, and a boy in the class, got their sharpness stolen also. And we knew who took it. The boy told the teacher and the teacher demanded the girl, to hand over the sharpener. The girl handed it over while yapping, that her mom bought it for her. The boy said, that he wrote his name on it in permanent marker. The girl then stated that there was no name on it. The teacher looked and found the side of the sharpener was scratched out with a black crayon. The teacher scratched the crayon off and revealed the boy's name. The teacher told the girl to go to the principal office, but she refused, so the teacher actually had to drag her ass out the room. TLDR. Beach finally got caught stealing other people's pencil sharpeners and got her as dragged to the principal's office. I sat there smirking. I worked at Belk when I was younger, as you all may know the busiest day of the year in retail is Black Friday, day after Thanksgiving in the US. I sold watches, like Fossil, Kenneth Cole, Guess etc. This lady comes in when it is slammed busy and wants to look at several watches. I was the only associate at the counter, so I pulled out the couple she wanted to look at and proceeded to help other customers. She was literally at the counter for an hour, bugging the crap out of me making me get out and put up over 30 watches. She finally bought one, and, I never noticed, but, apparently she stole one of the other watches. Which would have been very easy to do, as there were about 20 people standing around and all of them were holding different ones. She had gotten on my nerves to the point that I complained to coworkers about this crazy woman who wouldn't leave, and, being a teenager, I was making fun of the way she looked and stuff, so. The next day, during the slowest retail day of the year, the woman returns and tries to return the stolen watch with the tag from the one that she actually bought. 
I remembered everything about her, and I especially remembered exactly which watch she bought, because it took her so long to decide. Anyway, I told her I knew she was trying to return the stolen watch. She denied it. I called her a lying thief and the loss prevention team told her never to come back, but the lady got the keep the watch, because they didn't catch her the day before. Surely she went down the road to another belk to try it all over again. Then the store manager at the time came up to me and told me that I shouldn't call customers lying thieves. I was like, are you kidding me? That one is a lying thief. Ugh, so dumb. So learn from your mistakes. If you are going to steal and try to return the merchandise for money, make the effort and drive to a different store. Dumb. Alrighty, here's mine. It's long and a novel. So I'll put the TLDR up at the top. TLDR. Friend asks if I can sell him my Xbox, because his is broken, I don't sell it to him. Friend breaks in, and steals my Xbox, ends up being accused of breaking in by me. Friend denies it. Friend breaks in again leaving his broken Xbox in its place. I trace the serial number back to him, call the cops, then break up his relationship, while getting my Xbox back. I'm a dude, and used to have a rumor to was a girl. Before anyone starts to think otherwise, she wasn't my type so there was no interest of that kind. Anyways, she used to have a boyfriend that would come over to our apartment every now and then to visit her. Being the nice guy that I am, and not wanting to be the weird quiet absentee roommate, I befriend her boyfriend. He's not the sharpest guy, and we are not the closest of friends, but every once in a while he'd arrive at our apartment earlier than her, and we chat, and play video games on my couch. I even invite the guy over for my video game nights, where once every few months I invite a bunch of friends over because I happen to have 2xbox 360 system linked together, and 8 player Halo is Josem. Note, I have two of them, because one of mine was an OG360 whose DVD drive broke, I ended up fixing due to being out of warranty, and in the meantime, bought an arcade unit, because I never actually expected the fix to work. Anyways, eventually my roommate moved out to another place, but I would still invite her boyfriend over to our gaming sessions, when I held them. This goes on for a couple of months and everything is normal. Sometime later he texts me asking me if I'm selling my seconds box because he's broke at home. I tell him no because I'm one of those weird guys that keeps everything electronic if it's functional. He says okay in kind of a dejected voice and I go on living my life. A couple of weeks later, I'm casually cleaning up my apartment and realize that my second 360 is gone from its location. TV that it'd be connected to is still there, everything else in my apartment is still around, the only thing missing is my 360 only used for LAN parties. In a panic, I'm running around looking to see if anything else is stolen, and I realize that, living alone and in a 6th floor apartment, there are no signs of break-in and nothing else is stolen. Not even my good and new 360. It then dawns onto me that either he or my former roommate must have used the key, snuck in, and taken the damn thing. So, I give him, we'll call him Navin, the benefit of the doubt, and call his cell. I ask him whether I'll lend my 360 out to him and forgot, I figure, to get my sheet back, it'd be better to give him an out than dealing with the police and whatnot. Navin replies with no, I, I, uh, don't think so. Which leaves me with the option of investigating and calling the police. I talk to my ex roommate slash Navin's girlfriend, we'll call her Jenny, and explain to her that I firmly believe that Navin stole my ex box. She instantly goes to his side and says no, it can't be. Listen, Navin was accused by his neighbors of stealing things and they didn't prove anything. He was innocent. Why would he steal something now? Are you sure you didn't misplace it? Why didn't I think of that? Of course I misplaced it. Because who doesn't casually walk around all day with an XBOX 360, like it's faking keys in a pocket? Also, excuse if I'm wrong, but if your partner were accused of stealing things in the past, wouldn't you be more questioning of his behavior before siding with him? Anyways, being the unhelpful doof that she is, Jenny ends up sticking to Nav inside and is reluctant to help me out. I ask that next time she's over at his place to check the serial number on those box and see if it matches mine. She gets offended and says no. I immediately call up the police to explain the entire situation, but I'm at an impasse. 
because he used my keys, probably copying them from when he was dating Jenny. Not only do I have to replace my locks, I also don't have any proof of forced entry. There's no dusting for prints or CSI sheet, because the Navin's been over before, and there's nothing that ties him to the theft. The cops only real advices, don't talk to either one of them. Basically, I have nothing for a few months. That is, until Rock Band 3 arrived. I love video games, I love Rock Band. So when Rock Band 3 arrived with its sweet new keyboard, I wanted to put it on a stand, so I could stand and play the damn keys. Yes, I'm a nerd. Remembering that I owned an old music stand that could hold up the keyboard, I searched my apartment, only to stumble upon a broken XBOX 360 stuffed under one of my cabinets. How do I know it's immediately broken? Because it's missing the freaking plastic cover. What it's not missing, however, is a serial number, which is still on the damn thing. I immediately call up Microsoft and ask whose account the console's attributed to they say that they're unable to give out names because of privacy concerns. Watching a lot of all the president's men, I ask the lady on the other line what if I tell you who I think owns the XBOX and you reply with a yes or no? I mention Navin's full name and she concedes. I finally have something. So, with that, I call the police and ask if I can accuse him of theft now that I have evidence that he broke into my place. The policeman says sure, but to be honest, it's long and messy, and we can't guarantee you'll get your box back. Try telling him that you have proof, and you might be able to get it back without having to press charges. So I call Navin up, and the lies start coming. First off, I ask him where his broken XBOX is. He says he put it in the trash. I ask him when. He says he can't remember. I tell him I'll help him out, and that it's in front of me as we're speaking on the phone. He goes silent and says he has no idea how his broken XBOX got there. I ask him if he's either a faking idiot or the worst thief of all time because he had half a brain, he wouldn't have left any proof of his break-in behind. He admits that he stole my XBOX and placed his busted one in my apartment, but the locks were changed before he could retrieve it. His thinking was that I would figure it as my own and fix it. Because, naturally, I wouldn't notice that. A, this XBOX had no plastic casing. B. This XBOX was unplugged and under a cabinet. C. This XBOX had an HDMI port on the back. Navin offers to return my stolen 360, and I say no. I tell him that I'm pissed off at him because of the sheet I had to go through, changing my locks, and worrying about getting my house invaded while I was out. How embarrassed I was in calling up Jenny and accusing someone I considered a friend of being a thief. Navin apologizes and says that Jenny had no idea that he stole it. I say that's nice because she wasn't willing to help me in any way. So with that, I tell him that he's not allowed to return the XBOX to me. He has to return my stolen XBOX plus money for the lock change over to Jenny and have her give me all my sheet. Basically, I wanted to have Navin admit to her that he was a thief and that she was a sheety friend for not helping me out when I asked her to. If he didn't comply, I would talk to the authorities and have him possibly arrested. And so he does. Now, here's the best part. I eventually go over to Jenna's new apartment to pick up the stolen goods and she's angry at me. She's angry at me because she had to hear her boyfriend tell her that she's a thief and blames me for screwing up their relationship. She also accuses me of being a bully to him while we were dating. This is bullshit. I never bullied the guy. Ever. I tell her she's in denial that her boyfriend is a thief and that she's literally blaming the victim. I take all my stuff, bring it back home, and haven't talked to either of those two people ever again. Cut off cleanly and coldly, she's tried to contact me over the past two years to apologize for her behavior the day I went to pick my stuff up, but I don't forgive because I know when the chips are down, she's not a good friend or person. On the plus side, 8 player Halo is pretty sweet. Local co-op is where it's at. I had to make an account just to upvote some of these amazing stories and to tell several, yes, several, stories of my own. For my first story, my iTunes account had gotten hacked. I had around $150 worth of gift cards on it. My family cannot think of any good gifts, so everybody gets the same thing. 
Anyway, they had used all of my credit on there, and bought many different albums of songs and games. They also had used about $100 from my mother's debit card. My mom called up the card company, who yanked that money back from Apple, they didn't want to refund it, and I believe the person who did it had been caught. I lost all of my gift cards sadly, but I still got to keep the dumb songs that were purchased in those apps. My next story involves my WoW account, I'm a nerd. They had hacked my account and I realized it when I was at a friend's house. Eventually got Blizzard to get me my account back, and on it, they had farmed me about 14k worth of gold, and got one of my characters to maximum level. Finally, this one happened fairly recent. I logged on my Xbox several months ago, and it said I was last logged on on a different console. Didn't think much of it, because my gamer tag was saved to a friend's console. Fast forward about 2 weeks and I cannot connect to Sparksly for some reason. My password had been changed. I called up Sbox support and the lady on the other end goes well, this is interesting. It turns out the hacker had bought 10,000 Microsoft points, $125, with a card that wasn't even on my account, and it's worth mentioning I had two different cards saved on my account, but they were under shade. After a few days, Sbox changed my email and password, and took the lock off of my account. The 10,000 manuscript points were still there, so I called Sparks back and asked about them, because I'm a good citizen. The lady said the investigation team makes final decisions, so I get to keep all of my points. Chatching. TLDR first story lose a lot of iTunes money, debit card gets stolen second story wow account hacked, and I get a free level 85 and 14k gold third story Sparks account hacked, and I get 10k free manuscript points and the hacker used a card that wasn't even on my account. Oh god, I've heard too many of these over the years. Here are a few, woman had her house broken into and a bunch of things stolen electronics furniture, household items they basically cleaned her house. The next day, devastated, she was looking out her window and saw her curtains hanging from her neighbor's window. Long story short, the robbers got arrested and she got her stuff back. A man was in his car getting his cash from one of those drive up ATM things and a masked man ran up with a gun and told him he was getting carjacked and to get out of the car. Man said, okay, just let me drive forward a bit so I can open the driver's door. Kajika agreed to let him drive forward, and the man took off in his car and got away safe. This guy somehow managed to smuggle a MacBook Pro out of an Apple store and seemed to have gotten away completely free. Two years down the road, he brings it it for a minor repair. They plug the serial number into their computer and discover it was stolen. Thief goes to jail. A drug dealer somewhere decided that he wanted money, but not to give up his drugs. At his next big deal, he gets the money off the guy then tackles him, slits his throat, and leaves him for dead. The almost dead guy crawls to get help, goes to the hospital, and makes a full recovery. Would be killer as charged with attempted murder. TLDR dumb robber, dumb carjacker, dumb thief, dumb would be killer. Posting for the hell of it. The university I attended calls its campus urban. I had 7 roommates in a huge house, and one morning, one guy couldn't find his car keys. He looked everywhere, no dice. Eventually he went to check his car, and that was gone too. We are not sure how the thieves got his car keys, but we suspected some shady friends of friends might have been involved. His car, a Wrangler, turns up a few miles away abandoned on the road. The keys were in the ignition. Apparently the thief couldn't get the keys out because of the locking mechanism or didn't have time to figure it out when he had to bail on the thing. So the cops impound the vehicle and hold it for a few weeks while they collect evidence. Rumored borrows his parents car and survives in the meantime. So, one day, he gets the call that he can pick his car back up. I ride with him down to the impound lot so we can bring both cars back afterward. After dealing with some toll lot mutants, he gets the keys to his weeks long missing precious jeep. At this point we go for the car, no word on if they ever had a suspect or got anywhere with the investigation, he was just happy to get his car back and be back to normal. So we go to check it out, I think the thing was in good shape outside, so we got inside and looked around. In the back seat was a big navy blue adidas bag, one that did not belong to my roommate. 
We open up the bag, and we find a headlamp, multiple IDs, screwdrivers, a Leatherman tool, a few purses, checkbooks, a whole bunch of sheet. He calls the cops from the impound lot to let them know about the bag. I'm not sure if they had him leave the car or just asked for the bag. We collected some till and the headlamp as a derelict tax, and the police continued their investigation of what really was a very violating and personal crime. They ended up catching the guy, and I think rumored went to court to see him go down. Hopefully those purses, IDs and checkbooks were returned to their owners. TLDR stolen jeep, burgle bag in backseat when returned, contains more stolen property, and the idea of car slash stereo thief. How my brother ended up with the nickname the muffin man, my brother, my cousin, and some of their friends are out cruising one night in my brother's car, and ended up behind a public supermarket. Sometimes, grocery stores will get shipments of food delivered that sit out back for a while, before they are brought into store. It just so happens, that this particular Publix had just gotten the shipment of several pallets of muffins, that were just sitting in the dark alley behind the store. My brother cousin, et al proceeded to fill the trunk of the car with as many plastic containers of muffins as they could before bailing. Fast forward an hour or so, and the group happens to see some friends of his hanging out in a Denny's parking lot. After pulling in, my cousin hops out of the car and pops the trunk to display their newfound baked goods. Right in front of an unmarked police car. The officer in the car apparently found it really strange that someone was so excited about about showing off stuff he had in his trunk, so he decided to investigate. My cousin jumps a fence and runs for it when he sees the cop, making it entirely apparent that something illegal is going on. My brother, being the driver, was singled out and ended up in cuffs, but my dad, a firefighter, talked the cops out of more serious charges. My brother ended up having to pay for the muffins, they were subsequently given away to homeless people and serve some community service. For Christmas that year, he got tons of muffin man stuff as well as a pair of get out of jail free boxes from my dad. TLDR, my brother stole a sheet load of muffins from Publix and got caught because my cousin isn't that bright. Now we call him the muffin man. A good friend of mine has her iPhone stolen a month or two ago. Although Apple said they cleared her iCloud information to avoid any kind of identity theft, they didn't. She signed in to get her info on there to discover the person who stole her iPhone was a 13-year-old kid as she had his facebook and photos of him. So, she decided to strike. She called the phone, not entirely sure if he had changed the number or how she got it, and spoke to him. She said something along the lines of, where did you steal my phone from? The kid quickly hung up and didn't answer her following phone calls. She texted him, we can do this the easy way or the hard way. You give back my phone, leave it at and this will all be over. The hard way, I go to your house with the police and talk to your parents. I already have all your information, your call. Of course the kid agrees to the easy way and leaves it in a store at the mall he stole it from to begin with. She had gotten her phone back, unfortunately the screen was cracked, but didn't have to buy a new phone. Also possibly scared that kid straight from stealing phones ever again. When I was living in the Netherlands, I moved to a new apartment in town, but was a little lax in letting my bank know my new address. So for a little, while my bank statements were still being mailed to my old address, imagine my surprise when one day at the ATM I discovered that my bank account had been completely cleaned out. When I got home that day, the first bank statement mailed to my new address was waiting for me. A number of money transfers were listed, moving money from my account to two others, and the names of the recipient account holders were also listed. I did not know either of these guys. Next day I went to the bank to report it, and the bank examiner stared at my statement in disbelief, remarking over and over how stupid these criminals were. It turns out that they lived in my old building, and had taken my bank statements from the common mail drop, and had contacted my bank to request a Togang's code access code, with which they could do money transfers over the phone. They forged my signature on the form requesting this code, and the bank didn't catch it, so I got my money back. After the bank, I went to the police with my evidence, and they let me know that these guys were suspected of a number of other crimes, but they lack sufficient evidence to detain them. 
My bank statement was just what they were looking for, and they were caught, tried, I was a witness at the trial, and convicted, and got a few years in the pokey. Me and my friends were walking back from the movies, we had just seen the other guys and we were in happy spirits. When an sav pulls up to the end of the street, we heard one of them go who. So we went who, back, and I being the jackass, that I'm flashed my man boobs at him. We figured nothing would come of it, until the driver gets out, and threatens us to a fight to which we declined and kept walking. The guy keeps talking shit to us until a car pulls up, and honks his horn at them for blocking the road. They leave and we think that's the end of it. Then 5 minutes later they barrel up the road, and start yelling at us to which we ignored them, and kept walking, while my friend was on the phone with the police. They get out, and I turn around, while my friends have their backs turned they get pushed around, and punch knocking a neighbor's mailbox over, and my friend's tooth out, it was a half broken one already these guys couldn't hit for sheet. I swung at the guy with me, and he managed to duck me, and slap box my face which didn't hurt. Then the neighbor, a marine comes out all pissed off, I live just one town away from Paris Island, so we have a huge marine corps presence, pissed the fuck off, and scares them off, after he and his wife figure out that we weren't looking for trouble, but not after the marine gets the license plate number after the dumb fuck that started all of this decided to do a three point turn to get away. So we think that's the end of it, and that those guys may or may not get charged, and the police come and get our story. We start filling out the incident reports, and when all of a sudden we notice an oddly familiar sub driving by, we point it out to the officers and one goes to investigate. All of a sudden 5 minutes later this same sub is barreling around a curb and trying to evade police. He hits a car trying to enter a neighborhood and attempts to duck out the police by driving down the next street. Apparently this is whole thought he could get away with returning to his mom's house after he dropped his friends off and got more. Immediately his friends ratted him out, not the other two guys that assaulted us. So the cops got the numbers of the two guys who hit my friends and called them to come over. Immediately they were arrested and sent to jail. Two plead guilty and one got off because of the cops major fuck up and a fuck up of mistaken identity. I'm sure the driver is in jail for a while because hit and run slash DUI slash evasion of arrest slash ETC probably faked his life up because the dumbers wanted to come back home. TLDR. I was assaulted, and the perpetrators got arrested, by returning to the scene of the crime as we were with the police filling out the incident reports. I have one. So I go to a college, that is in the middle of downtown Atlanta, and seeing a crime being committed is kinda common. However the criminal in this story is particularly stupid. There is a gas station right across from my dorm, and during the daytime it is really busy. Students, locals, commuters, and more importantly campus police and the APD, go there all the time for gas or food. In fact, sometimes the campus police who are on patrol park at the gas station, if they can't park at the campus police station that is right across the street from the station. Well, one day, in broad daylight, during one of the busiest times of the day this guy gets the smart idea to try to rob the gas station. I guess he didn't realize that there were students, myself included, across the street at the dorm either sitting outside or waiting for the bus watching it go down, and the people who were pumping their gas were watching him. Some of us called the cops slash campus police to report it. I just thought to myself how can someone be so stupid? What makes this even better is that he also didn't realize this was the time of the day when campus police do drive by and park at the gas station. It took them less than 5 minutes to get there. The robber never even made it out of the gas station with the money. It was all over in about 15 minutes. My husband and I had just bought each other 4th generation iPads, not even 3 months old at the time of this incident. Our house had a carport and my husband's truck was literally parked less than 5 feet from our door. My husband had a horrible migraine and went into the house and laid down. Well. He was feeling so sick that he had forgotten to lock his vehicle's doors. We wake up the next morning, Easter Sunday, and wake up to find that his iPad was stolen from his truck. Well, he had his info on the iPad and even had a reward sticker on it simply for this reason. Well, we told his parents who own a gas station slash pawn shop a block down the road from our house. No kidding, I could look out of the office window and easily see the store. 
We told them to keep an eye out for an iPad matching the description that my husband had given his mom. Sure enough, some moron kid comes in and tries to pawn it. They were the only pawn shop in the area that was open on a Sunday. Well, the dumbass had no idea that he was trying to pawn my husband's stolen iPad to my husband's mom. She walked to the back of the store for a moment and she called the cops. The guy started freaking out when she told him that he wasn't leaving the store with the iPad and that she had called the cops. We had reported it stolen earlier, so it was on record. I'm sure they would have stolen mine too, but my doors were locked. The douchebags, another kid helped steal it, never did get in trouble, even after being caught red-handed. I'm glad that we got it back, and if we had been given the opportunity, we would have pressed charges. There are a lot of break-ins in that area and my in-law's store have had things stolen several times. Well this story isn't nearly as good as the others, but it sure made me happy. I was parked in front of a games top, and lucky for me, I was sitting in my car counting my cash before I went in. While I was sitting there, some idiot in a big truck tries to pull into the small compact space next to me. He takes it slow, stopping to gauge the chances of him actually fitting into the spot. After his deliberation, he decides yup, there's no faking way I'm fitting into that spot, so I'm gonna try anyway, and pulls in next to me, scraping all up the side of my brand new car. He realizes what he did, because he then threw it in reverse, and backed out of the spot, scraping the sheet out of my car a second time. He then tries to GTFO of that parking lot and actually manages to leave, but not before I was able to get his douchebaggy novelty license plate number. I go to the police station to file a report for the hit and run, not expecting them to really do anything, even though I practically spelled it out for them with the license plate number. But I was wrong. They paid the guy a visit and he denied mostly everything. He claimed that he did remember seeing my car and me sitting in it. He said that he had seen that he wasn't going to fit in the spot and parked elsewhere in the parking lot, then walked right in front of my car into the store and that I hadn't tried to talk to him or anything. In actuality, I had gotten out of my car directly after he hit me, so there's no way he would have seen me sitting in my car 5 minutes later. Anyways, they ended up looking at his car and seeing the paint on his bumper that matched the specialty bright blue color of my car, and he had to write me a check for the damages. My house was broken into about 4 months ago, they went in through my basement window and stole a hefty amount of stuff including my Xbox, all the Xbox games, my laptop, my cell phone, parents jewelry, and electronics, my brother's coin collection worth over a million dollars, and a lot of other crap. Actually what makes me disgusted slash embarrassed the most was that they put items into my dirty laundry bag, which had bras and underwear in it, and thought they were geniuses to have a bag they could put stuff in, and they decided to leave it at my door because they ran out of time. I had to leave it there for the police to investigate. So anyway, we called the police and they came about 5 hours later, told us they couldn't really do anything, took pictures of the window that was broken, and pictures of the footprints left behind, investigated around, and that was it. They told us that, if we find anything, that could help to call them, or to email them a sap. A day or two after the idiots that broke into my house decided was a good idea to put their sim card into my phone and go on Facebook. However my Facebook likes to alert me 24 over 7 when someone is trying to log onto my Facebook. So there it was Samsung Galaxy Ipe xxx.xxx.xxx.xxx. Not sure if I can post the IP up here, I actually still have it. Being the 17 year old girl I was, I immediately emailed the police officer who was in charge my investigation. I was so excited that these guys would be caught and brought to justice. It's already been 4 months and I haven't got a reply back, not even a thanks we'll look further into it. A few months ago I actually went ballistic from the waiting and just looked up who had the IP address. Myself and I found that they lived on the other side of town, if the tracking program actually successfully worked. However I'm only a 17 year old girl who can't do anything about it. To this day it still drives me insane, just wish these moffas would be brought to justice. TLDR. Police where I live, arm office who don't help you when you provided valuable information regarding someone who broke into your house. These aren't super epic, 
but here are a couple run-ins I had while working retail. First job I had was at Jmax. I was cleaning up the purse area and saw some old ratty purse on the rack amongst the new ones. Someone had swapped their old sheety purse for a new one. They just threw all their belongings into the new one and left the old one behind. In their haste, the girl forgot like $3 worth of change which was very much enjoyed by me and my co-workers on our breaks since we had a vending machine in the break room and she forgot her library card. I went to the library and checked out like 15 books and never returned them haha. <laughs> I used to be a store manager at Zoomies, which is a horror story in itself. Some chick came into the store and wanted to use some traveler's checks to pay for her stuff. She walked around the store and just sort of grabbed some random sheet that added up to about $20. I was feeling lazy and told her that we don't accept traveler's checks and that she'd have to come back with cash. Really, I just didn't want to go through the process of verifying that sheet. I found out a week later that the traveler's checks were fake and she ripped off 5 different stores with them. She did the same thing she did in my store pick out $20 worth of merch and then pay with a $100 traveler's check, giving her $80 cash back and whatever random sheet she bought. She got away with about $1,000. My laziness actually worked for me for once. So I thought it would be funny to play music out of speakers I set up in my locked during junior year of high school. I had my iPod hooked up to the speakers and played Backstreet Boys slash NSYNC and left it playing for most of the morning. At lunchtime I went back to my locker and didn't hear any music. I just assumed that the battery died. I opened my locker and the speakers were still there. But, my iPod wasn't. I went to my teachers nearby asking if they took it out, potentially getting a janitor to open the locker to shut it off, and no one knew anything. I went to the janitors next, they didn't know anything. Finally at the end of the day I went to the school security and they said they would check the cameras later. Luckily, the camera was right next to my locker, so I didn't have any apprehension regarding the culprit's apprehension. Fast forward one week, they were able to pinpoint the crime on a big jerk at my school, let's call him Steve. Essentially, the video showed him punching my locker open, looking at both ends of the hallways, and pulling out my iPod. He fessed up to the crime right away, having already been in trouble with the police. That night, he called me, saying he didn't have the iPod anymore, sold it for weed, but he was really sorry and didn't want me to press charges. I just told him, if he got me my iPod I wouldn't, money wouldn't cut it, I had over 5000 songs and loads of movies on it that I couldn't get back. Three days later, got my iPod back. Win for the good guys. Now, both of us are on cordial terms with each other. TLDR guy punched my locker and it opened allowing him to steal my iPod, all caught on the camera right above him. This will probably get buried, but here's my story about a stupid thief. When I was a freshman in high school I had my iPod touch and a pair of headphones stolen. I was pretty upset about it and called my parents to let them know just before school ended. After having reported it, I go home and think about it all day because it was my only source of music. At this point I had had no suspects. Fast forward to the next day. I walk into my third period class which is ceramics and I see this guy, let's call him Kyle, wearing the same faking headphones I had lost yesterday. I thought it might have been a coincidence, but I decided to ask him about it anyway. When I asked Kyle. He fed me this bullshit that he found them outside after class and I told him that those were mine and they were stolen the day before. He looked a little nervous, gave them to me and quickly walked away. At this point I was sure he did it because he had been rumored to steal things before. I decided to tell my friends in that class what I had found and one of them told me that they had seen Kyle taking something out of my backpack and put his fingers up to his lips as though to shush my friend. My friend just thought maybe he was taking a piece of gum but now had a different opinion. With all the evidence that I had now, I told the ceramics instructor and he told me to go up to the office to report it. I headed up to the office with my headphones in hand to explain what more I knew. Shortly after I had told my story to the woman in charge of theft at our school, Kyle is called in and interrogated by her. As of then, I was feeling pretty stoked because I thought I was going to get my iPod back. 
After she had talked with Kyle, she told me that they were waiting for the police to arrive because I had sufficient evidence that it was him. She also told me that he said to her he didn't have it and knew nothing about it. I sat there for what felt like hours waiting for the police to arrive with Kyle not more than 10 feet away from me. When they did finally arrive they asked me for information about what it looked like and the evidence I had already told the school. Shortly after, Kyle was interrogated once again by the police and I was told to go back to class. Later in the day, during my last class, I was called up to the office. The police were standing in the office with my iPod and headphones sitting on the desk. I was ecstatic. I called my parents to let them know and told all my friends I had it back. While I was away at class, it turns out the police searched his home because he was showing signs of worry and nervousness, so I heard, and they found it in his room. He ended up getting a 5-day suspension and community service. TLDR, kid at my school, interrogated by the police for stealing my iPod and headphones. Also was wearing the stolen headphones a day after they were stolen. I guess this isn't so much a dumb criminal scenario, but I think it's worth sharing. About two months ago, I dropped my iPod touch, leaving it with a broken screen it was a bumper, but at least I could still use it right, but I use it at school, and I got bored one class period, and ended up picking at the screen which led to me accidentally breaking the Wi-Fi receptor I decided to sell it cheap to someone else who would be willing to fix it for themselves. I was asking for $25, it was 32 GB, although I never got to sell it someone in my gym class, had stolen it a few days after the Wi-Fi stopped working on the iPad. All the coaches did was say to let an administrator in the offices know that it was stolen, since they were not allowed to search everyone's backpack and there are no cameras in the locker room, of course, so I just decided to let it be, the thief had taken something so broken a few days later in English class, one of my classmates came up to me and said dude I can't believe you sold your iPod too, insert name, here, for $50, you totally ripped her off. I eventually got the girl he mentioned to find out the name of the guy who sold it to her. Instead of getting back the iPod, I went through his backpack one gym class and stole an Android phone he had. I had so much fun getting on his Facebook. I broke up with his girlfriend saying it was because I'm gay. Came out of the closet to his mother too in another personal message. And also publicly came out of the closet on a status of his. Lucky for me, this happened very close to the end of the school year, later that week. Once I had the last gym class with the thief, I posted on his FB never should have taken my iPod and broke the phone with a hammer. That was totally worth the 25 potential dollars I lost from the stolen iPod. I had my $600 cell phone stolen while I was playing soccer with a bunch of people and friends. I found it right after the game was over, so I asked one my friends to call my phone and the thief actually picks up and starts talking to me, mocking me because he was 100% sure he wouldn't be caught. Even went ahead and told me his name. Turns out it's someone named Thug Life Retard. While on the phone, I borrow my friend's laptop and type his name on Facebook. Not only do I find him, I find out exactly where he lives and thanks to Google Maps and some photos he in front of his house. Me and six of my friends proceed to drive to that house, knock on the door, and as soon as he opens the door we pull him out and start beating the living crap out of him. Afterwards I go in, find my phone in his living room along with his own laptop and a, probably stolen, iPad, to which I think cool free stuff. I walk back out with everything in my hands, tell him I have his stuff, and we drive off with me clutching to my brand new laptop and iPad, while he's crawling on the ground back inside his house. Bonus. He's never gonna find us, because there's no info he could have gotten on us, and the soccer field we were playing on was actually the first and last time we've been in, about 70 kilometers from where we all live, so there's no chance of randomly running into him. TLDR, one Abe Thug Lifer steals my phone, thinking he's into Shayable tells me his name, I track his house on Facebook, show up at it, beat the living crap out of him, get my phone back, and end up stealing his own laptop and iPad. He has no way to track us. Here's my awesome stupid criminal slash victim story. So I was living in a student housing facility, in a dorm room, or whatever it's called. 
Anyways, I had my own room, and so did everyone else in the building. But the building was sectioned. So five people shared a toilet, a kitchen and a hallway. At the end of this hallway, there was a shoe rack, with one shelf for each person. The problem was, I had a lot of shoes. So I had a pair of sneakers, that simply wouldn't fit in my part of the shoe rack. I tried putting them in the parts belonging to some of the other tenants. They had a lot of available space in their rack, but for some reason, they simply refused to have another man's sneakers in their shoe rack. My sneakers always ended up on the floor next to the shoe rack. This wasn't a problem for me. Thing is, the lazy dead-eyed polish cleaning ladies had a problem with it. Every week, one of them would come in with a mop, do a quick pass through the hallway, and then return to her cesspool cave or wherever. The amount of cleaning they did was simply irrelevant. Anyways, the polish cleaning cattle reported me to the student housing administration. Next thing I know I get a note on my door saying that my sneakers will be confiscated if I leave them on the floor of the hallway. I know for a fact that those shoes were never in the way of anyone, especially the polish cleaning ladies who didn't do their job anyways. The note had a name on it. Turned out our student housing facility had some kind of special student who got paid for keeping an eye on us other students. They called them house administrator, which apparently is another way of saying rad bastard Nazi. Oh, and she was a female. So of course she couldn't confiscate sheet. She didn't have any authority, she was just an ordinary student. I decided to give her a visit. Turned out Mikey could also open her section of the student housing facility. I knocked on her dorm room door, but she wasn't home. So I went back, got the note she left me, drew a raging penis on it, and put it on her door. I kept putting my sneakers on the floor of the hallway, and nothing happened for a few days. Then I came out from my dorm room one day, and my sneakers were gone. There was a note on the door, from the same rat girl saying that she had confiscated my sneakers. I got furious of course, damn beach stole my sneakers. I went to her dorm room, again, she wasn't home. Or she just pretended not to be home, I guess I did knock like a crazy murdering madman. So I sent her an email, demanding to get my sneakers back. Next day, I got an email saying that she had gone on holidays and wouldn't be back for a week. I would get my sneakers then, if I apologized. She wronged me. That she wouldn't be back for a week was information she shouldn't have given me. Most of the students were on holiday. I think it might have been Christmas or Easter or something. Anyways. I waited until the middle of the night, and then I went over to her dorm room with a crowbar. I had locked myself out of my dorm room one time, and me and a friend found out you could actually break it open with a crowbar without doing any damage. The only thing you needed to do was to squeeze the door over to one side until the lock pin came all the way out of the lock hole. Not well explained, but it doesn't matter. Point is, she had the same door, so breaking into her room without doing any damage was a piece of cake. I found my shoes in a bag on her desk straight away. I was actually only going to take my shoes and leave, but the beach wronged me. I went over to her computer. I didn't have to enter a password or anything. I go to Facebook, and surprise surprise I'm on her Facebook profile beach is ugly and morbidly obese. In her status update I wrote, I'm a filthy shoe stealing hoe. I also left her a note in place of my sneakers, that said you never touch a black man's sneakers. I could have left it at that, but the fat beach wronged me. So I shat on her pillow. The events that followed were not completely in my favor, but I believe she learned her lesson, you never ever touch a black man's sneakers.